Jerry Remy and Dave O'Brien with you from Fenway Park as we get ready for the home opener. A 105th for the Boston Red Sox here at ancient Fenway Park, which is in beautiful shape. Just in case you missed some of the pageantry of the pregame ceremonies, here's another look as the giant flag went over the green monster and left. The weather has cooperated. It is blustery today, but it is dry. Most importantly, the starting lineups announced for both the Orioles who are off to a perfect start. They're 5-0. John Farrell got a great hand coming back after beating cancer. And Dustin Pedroia did as well. Nobody got a bigger hand, of course, than David Ortiz, his final home opener of a legendary career. Great stuff, Jerry. That uh, certainly was, and uh, the whole ceremony was perfect right from the beginning, and of course, David's daughter singing the national anthem, which was a very, very touching moment for Ortiz. I think he had tears in his eyes, Dave, as he was listening to that, and he was probably more nervous than his daughter, you know, as she was singing the national anthem, because the flyover, everything going on today here at Fenway. The Green Mountain Boys, Bobby Orr here. Bill Russell, 82 years old, Ty Law. Championship rings as far as you can see and the first pitch tossed out by four all time legends and it's opening day 2016 from Fenway great to have you with us Dave O'Brien alongside the rem dog Jerry Remy Gary Streisky will also be joining us on the field of Red Sox now taking the diamond coming in three and two on the season and again it's David Price's day. Well, this is something Red Sox fans have been looking for for a long time. You know, talking about an ace of a pitching staff, and they certainly have one in David Price, and he gets his opportunity today in front of the Fenway faithful for the first time in a Red Sox uniform. Oh, here's a look at the Orioles starting lineup. It's brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Joey Rickard, great story. He's in center field, a rookie. He'll be followed by Manny Machado at third base, Chris Davis at first. Mark Trumbo, he's brand new to them. He's in left. Matt Weeders the DH today. J.J. Hardy is the shortstop. Jonathan Scope at second. Nolan Reimold in right field. And Caleb Joseph is the catcher in batting ninth against Price. David Price 1-0. Oh. ERA of three. And a week ago, he launched his Red Sox career with a 10-strikeout win at Cleveland. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are... Made three errors in five games so far. Travis Shaw will be at third base. Xander Bogots the shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. Hanley Ramirez the first baseman. Left to right. Brock Holt, Jackie Bradley Jr. and Mookie Betts. And Blake Swihart doing the catching for David Price. The umpires are brought to you by ToyotaCertified.com. Search for your factory back Toyota certified used vehicle right now. And it'll be fielding Culbreth with the balls and strikes. C.B. Buckner at first base. Jim Reynolds will umpire second base. And Benny Gonzalez will make the calls at third. We're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP is presented by ToyotaCertified.com. Search for your factory back Toyota Certified used vehicle right now. Buenas tardes, amigos. Well, here's a look at the weather brought to you by Benjamin Moore, the official paint of the Boston Red Sox. And just as we're coming to the first pitch, the sun comes through the clouds. It is supposed to be cloudy. Chance of rain, well, pretty minimal today. I think the thing to pay attention to today, Dave, is that wind that's blowing directly out towards center field, which is very unusual for this time of year. So here's David Price. His first pitch as a member of the Red Sox at Fenway Park. And the 6-5 lefty ready to go. And that'll be outside ball one as we are underway in the home opener. Rickard hitting 444 out of the chute. He is off to an 8 for 18 start. Just made his major league debut last week, and he'll look at a strike. And quite a story 24 year old from Las Vegas. He's a Rule 5 draft pick from Tampa Bay. They picked him up in December. And now he is their leadoff hitter. That one rocketed into left center field. It's going to get by Holt. Take a skip up into the 10 and down to second base with a double is Rickard. Who continues to hit the ball hard. That is six games now he's hit in six game hitting streak for Rickett as he jumps on a price fastball right here and takes in that gap in left center field. Quickly making some noise off that the left field wall. Brock Holt gets it back in, but they lead off double by Rickett. So that'll send up Manny Machado, the talented third baseman. 
He's hitting 429 so far for the 5 and 0 Orioles, the only unbeaten team in the majors. The last time they started 5 and 0 as a franchise was 1970, and they won the World Series. Their pitching has been awfully good. So Price gives up a quick double. Machado flirted with a bunt, but down into the dirt and stopped by Blake Swihart. You know, Price has faced the Orioles 19 times in his career. He's 8 and 4 against Baltimore with a 2.65 ERA last year. 1 and 1 in two starts with a 1.29 ERA. Red Sox starting pitcher presented by your New England Audi dealers. The slugger Davis, Chris Davis on deck. And the 1 nothing. He was out in front. Machado playing in his 168th consecutive game. Cal Ripken is not nervous. And no need to be at this point. <laughs> Last pitch was a changeup from Price at 84 miles an hour. Machado's already hit three home runs. So he's locked in right out of the chute here. He checked his swing. They do appeal. First base umpire Buckner says no swing. Back to back change ups from Price to Machado. Machado with very good power. They got a lot of power on this lineup. They swept Minnesota to start the season. Two balls, one strike on Machado. And a ball down and in. So the count goes to three and one. Buck Showalter, the skipper, back for his seventh year at the helm for Baltimore. He's a three time manager of the year. And a strike, says Phil the Cobra. That's a good pitch right there for Machado to. The take on that 3 1 count. It was a fastball right down the middle. I thought he'd be hacking at that, but just lets it go by for the strike. Machado's first major league hit came against David Price when Price was the ace of the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's the 3 2. Popped him up. Pedroia into center field. It's a very blustery day. Called off of Jackie Bradley there to make the catch. So one man out. Time for our twisted but true fact. In 11 career starts at Fenway, all as a member of Tampa Bay, David Price is 195 ERA, the best mark in Boston since 1920. Twisted tea is the hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. Be a little twisted. Well, Dave, we talked about the wind here today at Fenway, and it is really, really gusting out. That pop up started off in the infield, and eventually it was Jackie Bradley Jr. That had to call off Dustin Pedroia to make that catch. First out here in the top of the first thing that'll bring up Chris Davis who had 47 home runs last season. He'll take inside for ball one. Against Price he's never hit a home run. But he's six for 20. He also struck out nine times in those 20 at bats against the lefty. Xander Bogart's playing uh, directly behind second base and. Uh, a good place for a pickoff attempt right there where Bogarts is. Shading uh, Davis to pull. And that gives him a good opportunity to keep that runner close and also a, attempt a possible pickoff. The 1 0 to the dangerous Davis. He always takes a hack. He strikes out a lot. Struck out 208 times. He spent a chunk of the winter looking for a free agent deal, but on January 16th, eventually re signed with Baltimore. Seven years, $161 million contract. Part of the deal includes annual payments, Jerry, through 2037. That'll work. He'll be 51 <laughs> and still collecting. The 1 1. Sock foul. Davis has hit two home runs in the early going, but he's three for 17. 
talked about the strikeout so far he has four walks on the season with five strikeouts. Uh, David Price very very deliberate with men on base really slows it down. Mark Trumbull their new left fielder is on deck another home run threat here's the one two waved at and missed and he got him his first K in the book today and he makes it Chris Davis now perfect location if you watch where Blake Swihart sets up it's going to be away that's where they want the fastball away and up it doesn't quite get that high but it does get to the outside part of the plate and no contact by Davis that ball by him good fastball at about 95 miles an hour from David Price. See the breakdown on the pitch arsenal. A lot of fastballs, a lot of cut fastballs, change ups, and a very occasional breaking ball. Now the right hand hitter, Mark Trumbo, he had 263, 13 home runs for Seattle last year, and he flares that one foul back out of play. He was two for four on Sunday, off to a hot start. New to Baltimore this season, acquired in a trade from Seattle. Back in 2013, he had 34 homers with 100 RBIs for the Angels. Trumbo 7 for 19, 368 lifetime against Price. So pretty good numbers. Runner at second base and Rickard. Two down though. One and one. Is that fading changeup we were talking about? Throws a lot of them. That went 84 miles an hour, but the down and away, not even really tempting to swing at. He wanted to try to get it to just off the outside part of the plate, but a little too much off for David Price. The first inning runs have been a bugaboo for the Red Sox pitching staff in the early going here. Price trying to keep this run from scoring. Foul tipped into the mitt. That one at 93. Fans, be sure to stop by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Plain Ridge Park Casino is the official sponsor of winning. Soda Cal one and two. Price attempting to make it back to back K's and get out of this first inning unscathed. He steps off the rubber. That wind could really be a serious factor today Jerry. It certainly could and uh, this is more like a, a summer breeze blowing out. The ball could really carry to left and to center. One two. Two balls two strikes on Trumbo Matt Weeders would be next if given the opportunity for the Orioles. In fact the only game so far this season that the Red Sox have not allowed a run in the first inning was opening day. Started by David Price when he got the win. In Cleveland and now Trumbo will step out. Rickard started the inning by rocketing a double. He leads from second. The 2 2 to Trumbo. Just a bit low, and a full count. David Price had the lowest ERA in the American League last year in 32 starts 2.45. Two down. He is really slowing it down. Trying to get this out the pitch fouled back. As Trumbo hangs in. You know Dave I was watching Dustin Pedroia at second base and I notice he's setting up back on the grass. We'll get into this a little bit later but the Red Sox have changed the infield. The configuration of the infield they've made the dirt pot smaller. So you see Pedroia back a little bit deeper with two outs and that man in scoring position trying to knock down any kind of ground ball but we'll talk more about the infield later. That used to be dirt. That used to be a dirt area right there. Yes they have made it smaller. 
And now here comes Swihart out to the mound as these two want to get together on this 3 2 pitch. Might as well talk about it now while we got a second. The fact they made it smaller is the, they talked to the infielders and they wanted less dirt. Uh, Fenway had one of the biggest dirt areas in all of baseball. And Pedroia told me this morning they really wanted to build this field, the infield, like in Minnesota. And uh, it eliminates some bad hops on the dirt part of the infield. They've changed the composition of the clay, they put more clay in. And uh, it's a different look. Now, it may not be noticeable, but it certainly is smaller. May provide a softer landing spot for Pedroia, too, with all his dives. He'll be landing on outfield grass a little more frequently. Now the 3 2. And again, spoiled by Trumbo. He's had some pretty good hacks. Another fastball by the left hander from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. David Price, a product of Vanderbilt University, which is often called the Harvard of the South. I did not know that. It's another one that I never could have submitted an application to. Yet another. And a long list. He's a very bright guy. Three and two on Trumbo. Rickard at second base. Looking for that K. High chop. Bogarts hit right at his chest. Low throw and a nice dig there by Hanley. Hanley Ramirez continues to play a very solid first base. He saved his shortstop there. Nothing doing for the Orioles. Well, Red Sox coming to bat for the first time at home in 2016. They'll be facing the right-hander for the Baltimore Orioles, Giovanni Gallardo, 1-0 with a 180 ERA, former National League All-Star. He was a late addition to the Baltimore staff, signed as a free agent at the end of February. And it'll be Mookie Betts to lead things off, then Pedroia and Bogarts, as Price held in the top of the first inning despite the double. It was back on April 13 last year in the home opener when Mookie Betts was Superman against the Nationals. He had that sensational catch in the first inning to Rob Bryce Harper and he lines that one into right field. He's at it again. Remember he also stole two bases and belted a home run. It's like what else can Mookie do. He's on quickly with a base hit. Red Sox lineup brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Toyota's website for deals. Dustin Pedroia is next. Xander Bogarts at short. David Ortiz, the DH. Shanley Ramirez at first. Travis Shaw at third base with Brock Holt in left. Blake Swihart does the catching. And Jackie Bradley is in center field and batting ninth against Gallardo.
Well, here's Dustin Pedroia, who always likes to face the Orioles. 324 lifetime. He'll take ball one. It's all change up so far from Gallardo. And we saw that shot of Mookie Betts taking his lead off first base. We've mentioned this many times, but he likes to peek in, see if he can see inside the catcher's crouch to see if he can pick up the sign. If he pits breaking ball, good ball will go on. Gallardo, a guy who used to throw harder, he used to be in the mid to upper 90s. Not quite as hard anymore. He's about 92, 93 top end. Yeah, gets a lot of ground ball outs. Moves that fastball up and down. He keeps hitters off balance with a cutter, a curve, and a changeup. Now 30 years old from Mexico. A little chopper toward third, rolling along the line. They're going to let it roll in a foul ball and a good choice there by Machado, the gold glover at third base. So we were talking about Mookie in the opening day, had the home opener last year. And started with a spectacular defensive play. Bryce Harper may still be talking about highway robbery there. And then the two stolen bases on the same play. And then, of course, the power display as well. One of his 18 home runs last season. Spectacular way to start at home. Let's see if he's off to the races here. 21 stolen bases last year. He's won so far in 2016. He's not running. That's laced foul by Pedroia. That's a good guy to run against because, you know, he's very slow to home plate. He's got a high leg kick, and it takes him a while to get there. Plus, he doesn't throw very hard. You know, he, the fastball is not extremely hard. It's a, in, in probably the upper 80s, a lot of change ups. So it's a good guy to run against. He allowed 10 stolen bases last year. Pedroia is 5 for 12 off him with a home run, so he appears to see him pretty well. There again, you saw Betts taking his lead and taking a peek in. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the catcher's responsibility to close up the legs and make sure that the runner at first cannot see the signs. Caleb Joseph behind the plate for the Orioles. Runner holding. Looper fouled by Pedroia on deck Xander Bogarts. That was the best fastball he featured so far. That was 86. Velocity not what it used to be and well, that's a good pitch for Pedroia to hit. He's upset he missed that one. Fastball down and in at 86 miles an hour. Dustin 7 for 23 on the road trip that saw the Red Sox begin the season 3 and 2. And they're pretty happy with that. Runner goes. Little pop into right along the line coming on Reimold and that one's going to fall in. Mookie now taking off for third and he'll stop right there. And the Red Sox in business right away. First and third and nobody out here in the first inning. That's the little bloop out there to right field by Pedroia and Betts who was off with the pitch right now has no idea where the baseball is. He finally picks it up. He sees it drop in and he continues to third base. If that ball's caught, obviously he's doubled up, but you can see him trying to steal. Does not yet know where the baseball is. The way he found it is he looked toward the infield, and the, the infielders apparently tipped him off to where it was. You see the fake at second base by Scope? Mookie didn't know if it was a fly ball or a ground ball. Yeah, he didn't. Safely down to third, though. And the Red Sox with an opportunity to strike right away against the undefeated Orioles. Here's Xander Bogarts now. He's two for seven against this right hander and the first pitch is low for ball one. And David Ortiz is on deck. Since May 31st of last year Xander has 159 hits. That is more than any other major league hitter. Foul away. Trying to take that slide into the opposite field. That man at third base right now just trying to get the ball in the air somewhere in the outfield. Now they are shifting in the outfield. Playing Bogarts a little bit toward the right, as you can see. You see where the left fielder is? He's about halfway with that scoreboard. Wind blowing out to center. The 1 1 pitch. He let it go. Ball two. Red Sox have added extended protective netting behind home plate to the dugouts at Fenway. Major League Baseball has extended netting between dugouts for all field level seats within 70 feet of home plate. 
and is quite welcome to protect the fans. So that's brand new at Fenway, and that's up the middle. That's a base hit. Mookie Betts is in to score. Pedroia to second, and the Red Sox lead it one to nothing here on opening day at Fenway. And Bogarts picks up his second RBI of the season with that ground ball right back up the middle. We mentioned that the Gallardo gets a lot of ground balls, but nobody's going to be able to make a play on this. It quickly gets by him, and once it gets by him, it's going up the middle. Red Sox take the lead. And coming to bat for the first time in his last opening day at Fenway, here's Big Poppy. And wouldn't you know it, his first at bat, he has a run scoring chance. First and second. And nobody out. The chance starting already. He takes ball one. David has reached base with a hit or a walk in every home opener he's played with the Red Sox. Gallardo in trouble. Three straight hits. Two and nothing. David hitting 333 in his home openers as a member of the Sox with two homers, eight RBIs, and the previous 13 opening days here. The 2 0. Shot into left. Trumbo turning around. It's off the 10. In to score, Pedroia. Bogart's into third. That's going to be a long single and an RBI for David Ortiz. Two to nothing, Boston. And Ortiz, welcome back to Fenway Park, welcoming that left field wall back to his swing. He got a slider, a slider that was away from him, as you can see, outside part of the plate. Actually, more like a cut fastball, and that inside-out swing takes it off the green monster. So, I'll tell you what, the Red Sox are going to do some damage now because right now, Gallardo does not have much at all. Now, the first four Red Sox have all hit the ball against him pretty sharply, with the exception of Pedroia's that dropped in for a base hit, but it did find a home out there. And here comes Hanley Ramirez with runners at first and third and nobody out. The starting pitching has been terrific for Baltimore. It's a major reason they are undefeated right now. Their rotation 3 and 0 with a 228 ERA is supposed to be their weak link. Is Hanley now. He is cooking. He's hit safely in all five games. His 10 hits are tied for the American League lead and he cuts and misses for strike one. He was three for four on Sunday. Cut fastball that time outside part of the plate and breaking off the plate. I think every power hitter is peeking at that flag before they step in, and you can't blame them. The 0 1. Fly ball right center field. That's fairly well hit. On comes Reimold. Called off by Rickard. He makes the catch. Here comes the run. Xander tagging. And just like that, 3 to nothing Red Sox. Now, Dave, you know, we've been talking about situational hitting right from the beginning of spring training, and there's a good example right there by Hanley Ramirez. Get the ball in the air. You've got a first and third situation. You want to stay away from a double play. Get that ball deep enough to the outfield to get a run home. Obviously, you want to get a base hit, but if you don't, make a productive out. We were seeing a lot more of that early on. Than we did last year, Jerry. You certainly have. I and mean, that's a good example right there. That ball is away from Hanley, but still, plate coverage gets the ball deep enough to the outfield. Here's Travis Shaw now. That's the first out in the inning, but it brings in an RBI down into the dirt, deflected by Joseph. David Ortiz holding at first base. An outstanding start for the Sox here. A three to nothing lead in the home end of the first inning. Travis would love to lock in against the Orioles because they were maybe the only team that he didn't have good at bats against. He was one for 24 against them last year. To the right side. Into second base one on to first and not in time. He beat the rap. No double play. Very slow developing play thankfully for Travis. David Ortiz out at second base and now there are two gone. 
It looked like this was going to be a double play, but uh, Jonathan Scope, the second baseman of J.J. Hardy, and Hardy's throw is going to be a little bit wide at first base, and just able to beat it as Travis Shaw, Shaw hustling down the line. The Orioles defense is brought to you by DraftKings. Manny Machado at third base, J.J. Hardy the shortstop, Jonathan Scope at second, and Chris Davis the first baseman. Trumbo, Rickett, and Rymold in the outfield, and Joseph doing the catching. And Brock Holt in the lineup today, batting out of the seventh spot. He's back in there left field today. Didn't play on Sunday in Toronto after fouling a ball off his foot on Saturday. The Red Sox want that bat in there. He's seven for 17. With eight RBIs in the four games that he's played in. Here goes the runner, a pitch out. Here's the throw, and it's off into center field. Shaw with a theft, and now he's down to third base on the throwing error by Joseph. Well, I tell you, Dave, I mean, they got to take advantage of this because Diano's very, very slow to the play to use that high leg kick, and Shaw surprised him that time. They didn't expect Shaw to run. Well, it's the first stolen base of his career. I mean, he just gets a, a great jump, and even though that ball is just about a pitch out away, they still didn't have a chance at him at second base. Caleb Joseph makes the throw. It's going to bounce and bounce right by Hardy, who tries to catch it quickly and sweep tag, but never really had contact with the baseball. So a base hit would make it four to nothing, Boston. That's a strike. You go back to the All Star game of last year, and Brock Holt is hitting 439 with runners in scoring position. That is number one in Major League Baseball. So, awfully tough in spots like this. There are two down. Outfield shifting now with two strikes on Holt. They're shading him more toward the opposite field. They all moved over about three or four steps. Well, Buck Showalter guessed right on the stolen base, but it did not pay off. Hard ground ball down for it, Davis, and he'll get to the bag for out number three. But the Red Sox off to an excellent start against Gallardo and the Orioles. They get three right away in the first inning. Celebrate the Red Sox home opener as well as the 150th anniversary of a longtime Red Sox sponsor, FW Web Company. Traces its roots back to this exact day in 1866 and began as just the second plumbing supply house in Boston. Thanks to FW Web for being a loyal supporter of Boston Red Sox baseball. And we're back with you at Fenway. Red Sox off to a 3 0 start behind the ace, David Price, here in the home opener. Matt Weeders will lead things off for the Orioles. He's the DH today. Veteran switch hitting catcher. Some expected Weeders to depart Camden Yards as a free agent, but he accepted their one year qualifying offer. Joseph doing the catching today, and he's already been charged with an error. And that's down and in. It's 
David Price now with a career record of 105 and 56. He's had five 200 inning seasons. He's won 20 games once. Won 19 games in 2010. Last year with the Tigers, nine and four, and then with Toronto, nine and one. And signed by Dave Dombrowski. You know, we we listened to David Ortiz's daughter knock the cover off the national anthem today. That's what the family does. They hit him out of the park, and that one foul tipped it a bit for strike three. His daughter, Alex, just a sensational job. David Ortiz's daughter, I should say David Dombrowski's daughter, is also a talented musician, a great singer. There's a lot of excellent musicians in the Red Sox family. I actually got to hear some of that the other day when the rain out in Cleveland. We were sitting around after the ball game, and he was actually playing some of the songs that her group sings. He's very proud. I mean, they were on the radio and everything. Here's J.J. Hardy as he looks at a strike in the inside corner. 219 with eight homers, 37 RBIs last year. The everyday shortstop for Baltimore. And a strike. Jonathan Scope on deck. 3 nothing Red Sox here in the second inning. Chopper up the middle. Pedroia backhands off balance play. And he got him. An outstanding stretch as well by Hanley at first base. Uh, that's showing some range by Dustin Pedroia. He had a long way to go up the middle to get to that ball. Look where he's playing and look where the ball ends up. The big bounce. It hits the grass. The throw and the nice stretch by Hanley. Now Hanley's made a couple of nice plays already in this game. That's a great play by Pedroia, but a beautiful stretch by Ramirez. We take a look at Ramirez last inning picking a ball out of the dirt from Bogarts and watch the glove it goes from the ground up and that's what you want at first base as you're picking the ball out of the dirt. He continues to be so steady over there. So two down Jonathan scope 279 hit with 15 home runs last year takes a wild cut there. But when he's healthy when he's playing every day I still think Dustin Pedroia is the best defensive second baseman in the American League and he's out to prove it again this year you know they started to get on him a little bit in the offseason about uh, you know well maybe the range is slipping a little bit no sign of that he came to camp at Fort Myers with a different looking body a different frame biggest thing is his hands feel good. Yeah, we've seen him make plays going to his left, his right, all over the place. Price looking for a one, two, three. Sock but foul. He hooked that off the third base line. Well, if you want to sit in the most iconic seats in baseball, you can. A limited number of Green Monster tickets have been released for April. Does not happen very often. Some of those prices as low as $25. Head to RedSox.com slash Green Monster to find your tickets today. Two down. A little dribbler foul as Scope hangs in there. He's two for seven lifetime against the Red Sox left hander David Price. Red Sox getting three in the opening inning. Mookie Betts started it. Mookie likes opening day a lot. He likes it here too. He does. <laughs> <laughs> he really gets into it. A base hit and a run. Pedroia with a base hit and a run. Xander Bogarts with an RBI base hit in a run. David Ortiz with an RBI off the monster. Swung on and missed strike three. Price blows him away. He has three strikeouts already and he gets him one, two, three.
by Subaru Retailers of New England, supplying award-winning all-wheel drive vehicles throughout New England. By Digital Federal Credit Union, see what DCU can save you. By buyatoyota.com, Toyota's website for deals. And by T-Mobile, get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE coverage in the last year. Fenway Park for the home open of the 105th opening day at Fenway Park. And the Red Sox lead 3-0. They charge Gallardo in the first inning. Swihart going after the very first pitch of the second inning. Blake will be followed by Jackie Bradley and then Mookie Betts. A little different look that time. The curveball from Gallardo. He was an all-star with the Milwaukee Brewers in 2010. Enjoyed several strong seasons with the Brewers. He was 17 and 10 in 2011, 16 and 9 in 2012. Last year, he won 13 games for Texas. That one ripped down the line, but foul up into the stands where they rise up. MLB.TV Premium is everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game on all 30 teams in true high def on over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. And a one two. Little flare over short into left coming on Trumbull. So one man gone Jackie Bradley will dig in. That was the first fastball that Swihart saw it not a bad. He saw a curveball. He saw back to back change ups and then when he came with the fastball which is not that hard. He was still a little bit late on it from seeing all the off speed pitches. Here's the last pitch fastball. You can see that's why hot a little bit late because all he had saw before that was something off speed. Jackie Bradley. One for three with a double lifetime against Gallardo so not a whole lot to go off. He was three for 13 on the road trip. Red Sox are home for 10 games. So you have many opportunities to come out and see the Sox on this homestand first one of the season Toronto in after Baltimore that's a strike big shift on Jackie Bradley three men on the right side of the infield and in shallow at third base as Machado pre preventing against a possible bun by Bradley in that direction one away in the two one. He would not offer. The Red Sox have won their first home game in 18 of the last 23 seasons, going back to 1993 with wins in 10 of the last 11. So it's been a very good day for the Red Sox. This is starting out the same way. He does bunt. He lines a bunt past third base foul. Well, the game's going on. See, it was a 3-1 count. So on 3-1, Machado moved back to his normal position at shortstop. Bradley saw that. And tried to bunt one down that third base line. I mean, all he had to do was get it fair, and he has himself a base hit. Look what Machado was now on the 3 1 count, not expecting Bradley to bunt, and he had all kind of room. He just gets it fair, he's going to hit. So the count is full. 3 2 swung on and missed. That one in on the thumbs and struck him out. So two gone. A little bit of a slider that time from Gallardo to pick up the strikeout against Bradley. Slider of the cut fastball, one of the two, but you can see Bradley swinging over the top of it. Starts on the inside corner, ends up just about two or three inches inside the plate. Mookie Betts, his second trip to the plate today. He ripped a single his first time up and would score the first run of the day. Maybe just getting back home to Fenway is all that. Mookie Betts needed because the road trip although it started out great on opening day in Cleveland with that two run homer didn't end that way it was one for 13 in Toronto he wound up three for 23 on the trip he takes a ball high that's 35 pitches for Gallardo in an inning and two thirds Dustin Pedroia would be next. Two and one. On this date in Red Sox history, 99 years ago today, Babe Ruth tossed a three hitter and shut down the Yankees on opening day. 
That's all we'll say about that. Off speed, but that missed inside. And again, no fastball and a hit is count that time. Goes to the curveball to Betts and looked like a pretty good pitch, but not called a strike. A hitter's count for Mookie. High chop past the diving third baseman, and he's two for two. Yeah, I think it was just about getting home to Fenway. And again, I think Mookie would be looking to run here with two outs, try to get in scoring position for Pedroia. Big hole between third and short, not exactly crushed, but uh, the good location, the dive by Machado, excellent third baseman. He can't come up with it once it gets by him in the left field. So the second time he's had a two hit game. And Pedroia trying to join him. He dropped a single into right field in the first inning. I tell you, if I'm Mookie, I'm not waiting around either. I, I, you know, I'd like to get the second base to give Dustin a pretty good count to work with. The Red Sox do have a stolen base today, but Travis Shaw has that, the first of his major league career. Gallardo knows that too because a couple of throws to first base, but. You know, as a base stealer, what you try to do is get there as soon as possible. You don't, you want to try to get there before there's two strikes on the hitter. Give him some count to work with. Let's see if he's going right away here. He's not, he bluffs, and it's up high. Pedroia has a bit of an obscure streak going right now. He's now reached base in 43 consecutive games against the American League East. That's the second longest such streak by Red Sox player. He's added to that today. Wade Boggs ran his to 61 in a row in 1984 and 85. Red Sox ahead 3 0 in the second. Xander Bogart's on deck. Now the 2 0, and Betts is running. And a high pop up into center field. Trumbo, the left fielder, moving over to the alley, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Looked like Mookie got a pretty good jump there. Red Sox do not score here. 3 0 Boston after two.
You can tell as you look out of the Green Monster, top half of the third inning, and the Red Sox on top, three to nothing behind David Price. Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien, delighted to be joined by Red Sox president Sam Kennedy joining us in the booth. Sam, a great opening ceremony. I have to ask you, was that all a surprise for Big Poppy today that his daughter sung the national anthem? It was, and boy, was he emotional. He was uh, covering up those tears behind those sunglasses, and uh, afterwards he yelled at about four or five of us down there. He said, if you ever do that to me again, you guys are in big trouble. And, wow. and he goes out and knocks one off the wall. Yeah, right away. D David Ortiz. Incredible stuff. It was such a touching moment. By the way, she could really sing. She was terrific, and uh, we're just so, so proud of her. She's been obviously with the organization uh, since David came in in 2003, and to see her grow up here at the ballpark along with D'Angelo and Tiffany and the entire Ortiz family, we're really uh, happy that uh, we could kick off the season at Fenway Park this way. I mean, how does it make you feel now to be on the field for ceremonies like this, knowing this is the last home opener ever for one of the great legends and the best clutch hitter the Red Sox have ever had. There's the moment before the game. You know, it's a very special moment, and uh, I think one of the things that uh, has happened under the John Henry and Tom Warner stewardship of this franchise is a recognition that uh, opening day is about so much more than just baseball. It's uh, this great fan base coming together, turning the page on winter, and, and uh, opening up Fenway for the entire summer. I'll tell you, Sam, one thing I really enjoyed with the ex uh, athletes from around town, Bobby, Bobby Orr, and of course Bill Russell, Ty Laura, I mean, that was fantastic, you know, because those are all the guys that I watched. And, and Absolutely. It's amazing. It was, uh, we feel so privileged. We thank uh, all three of those gentlemen for being here today, making the time to uh, tip their cap to David Ortiz. And Tom Karen said on the way in here, I think it was 19 rings between uh, everyone else there on the field only is, 19 yeah pretty, yeah pretty staggering this was a great moment too with Bobby Orr and Bill Russell now 82 years old you know what was particularly touching was before they threw out that first pitch Bobby Orr on one arm and David Ortiz on the other and Tyler right there as well walking Bill Russell out to the mound so he could do that Bill Russell told David and there's a base hit into left field by Caleb Joseph he had never done that before we, we picked that up on our microphone it was a very touching moment it was very cool to see these guys uh, pay that uh, close attention to uh, to Bill Russell, one of the great uh, icons in the history of sports. And it was uh, a special moment. And I don't think that an active player uh, has ever thrown out the first pitch, at least in uh, in our time here. So, so to honor David with that uh, moment was uh, was a great thing. As he was walking out, Jerry looks at me and goes, 11. That's 11 <laughs> championships. It's unbelievable. That's more rings than he has fingers. Yeah, it's Remarkable. Take that, Will Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> Rickard, the batter, he's one for one with a double. We talked about, Sam, the new netting and the safety precautions here at Fenway. Fans will notice that, I think, immediately when they come into the ballpark this year. Yeah, we had a great day. Uh, Tom Werner led uh, Mayor Marty Walsh through the ballpark and to show him all the upgrades on Friday. And the netting uh, got a lot of compliments. There's some mixed reaction, of course, when we um, were, um, were required to make some changes. But I think overall, it'll be for the best. And we're meeting Major League Baseball's minimum standards, which is a 70-foot radius from home plate. Well, some ball clubs are actually taking that, as you know, all the way past the dugout. I mean, they're going behind the dugout, but then they're going all the way down to the far edge of the dugout. The Red Sox have not done that. They are. No, we're into the inside wall, and, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's important to make sure that we do everything we can for fan safety, but, of course, we want to remind people when they come to Fenway, uh, foul balls will always be a part of uh, the game, and they, they come in pretty quick, whether you're sitting right behind uh, home plate or you're, you're down the line. So people do need to be mindful. Uh, and we've had some other major changes to Fenway, of course, adding 222 seats down the State Street Pavilion. Uh, major upgrades out at Gate K for our Calling All Kids initiative. Uh, we redid all of uh, the third base concourse. I cannot say enough about Jonathan Galula, who runs all of our Fenway Park improvements. Incredible imagination, great leadership by him and his entire team to make sure this place is ready to go uh, today for opening day. In so many ways, it's the Fenway Park I grew up with, and you did, and Jerry did. But in so many other ways, in great ways, it's not the improvements and the imagination that have come to the fore here it kind of blow you away. Well, we have the uh, Hippocratic Oath of do no harm to Fenway Park. I mean, that's uh, first and foremost when John Henry and Tom Werner and Larry Lucchino came in in 2002 and evaluated what the options were to, with Fenway. And when they made the decision in 05 to preserve and protect Fenway, we wanted to make sure any additions uh, sort of looked like they'd always been there. Rickard takes ball four, so that'll put runners at first and second. Manny Machado 
We'll dig in next for the Orioles. Red Sox had three nothing as we chat with Sam Kennedy. Red Sox president here on opening day. You walk by all winter long an empty Fenway Park. And then today you've got thirty seven thirty eight thousand people in here and it's filled with life and it's breathing again. It's got to be wonderful. For you. It, it really is. You know opening day. We all remember begging our parents. Uh, can we please go to opening day. Is there uh, any possibility. And uh, for those of us who were fortunate uh, for mom and dad to write that note to the teacher once or twice to, to skip school and, and uh, to be here. It's a real thrill. And those are memories that you take with you for the rest of your life. So it's uh, it's a really special day. Machado chops that one foul for a strike. That's a real special day for you too. Right. So first opening day for you as the big boss. Uh, well I don't know about that but it's a special day for the 300 plus men and women that work for the Red Sox. We have an amazing team of people in every area of the operation from baseball operations to finance human resources ticket sales marketing broadcasting whatever it may be. It's a great great team of people. We've got great ownership uh, in John and Tom and we just uh, feel lucky to be here and hopefully we'll give our fans a lot to cheer about this season. The old one from Price almost got him on the foot. He had to skip out of the way. In fact, it did hit him, and that's going to load the bases. So Machado struck on the foot by a David Price pitch, and they're all filled up for Chris Davis. Yeah, John Farrell not certain about that right now. Is it going to call in and, and check and see if that did hit Machado? Machado right away pointed to his uh, leg and apparently just got a piece of his floppy uniform that's down at the bottom. The bell bottoms. The bell bottoms got it that time. The bell bottom got him. So they're all loaded up and Davis very capable of making it 4 three with one swing. He struck out in the first inning. So Price in a bit of a bind here. Last inning he cruised. He got him one two three. Davis struck out in the first. Red Sox ahead three nothing but that lead. And some jeopardy perhaps a swing and a chopper foul. I want to talk about calling all kids too because this is a big initiative for the Red Sox. It is you know we have an obligation uh, as a Major League Baseball franchise to connect with that next generation of kids. Uh, we started our free ticket program for kids who sign up for our Red Sox Kid Nation program. But more importantly we've got a nine dollar ticket for students anywhere in New England. Uh, come to the ticket office and you can get into Fenway Park for nine dollars. We do not want Fenway Park. Uh, to be difficult to access for kids as we build that next generation of fans. Nine dollars, the 0-1, big wave and a miss. I know somewhere out there, there's one kid today that's making his first appearance ever at Fenway Park, and it's a day that he'll never forget because I remember my first like it was yesterday. We, I think we all remember uh, coming into this great ballpark for the first time. Uh, for me, it was with with my dad, who uh, brought me to a lot of games on uh, on his clergy pass that the Yawkey administration was nice enough to uh, to give out. We would stand in section 25, and it, it, you just th those memories are so important, and that's the power of this place. O2 just off the corner. I remember coming in down the right field line with my grandma Joan, and looking out at Fenway and saying to myself. They don't make grass this green anywhere, do they? This is shocking. It's incredible. First base ramp for me. First base <laughs> ramp. First thing I saw was the green monster. You never forget this stuff. Never forget it. It's burned into your memory until the day you die. The one two got jammed and he fouled it away. And then Jerry goes on to, to play for the Red Sox and then broadcast the Red Sox. It's it's uh, what a story. That's the dream. It, that, that is Jerry the dream. has lived the dream. That lived is the dream. Absolutely. And uh, you know when you when you think about kids uh, coming here Jerry you're absolutely right. Some, someone out here probably many folks it, it may be their first time. Right. So we do have an obligation not just to provide a team on the field that's worthy of the fan support but an experience at the ballpark that is going to want uh, make fans want to come back and come back often. It's a nine dollar ticket. Here's the one two little floater and Pedroia can't get it. It'll drop in for a base hit. Joseph's in to score. Here comes Rickard. He is in to score. They're going to be safe on the corners and the Orioles are right back in the game. That'll make it three to two. Well, Davis you know Davis with a 300 career batting average against Price has not hit a long ball but he certainly had a share of hits. And this time gets a little bloop that's going to go over the head of Pedroia as you can see and two runs come across so a little bit of a struggle in this inning the walk a hit batter that just got a piece of the pant leg of Machado and now the base hit to bring in two runs. So the tying run is 90 feet away and Mark Trumbull will climb in the big left fielder former angel he is 0 for 1 with a grounder to short. 
chatting with Sam Kennedy Red Sox president here on the home opener the 105th home opener for the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park Price looking for a double play ball right here and that's in tight for ball one. I know you guys must be excited to be home. It's been uh, great to watch you on, on television, but uh, some of the players and, and managers and, and the coach and the coaching staff, I should say, were uh, really excited to get back home for Fenway and get in front of these home fans. Yeah, we came in last night after the trip back from Toronto, and Fenway was very quiet at that time, but you could already feel the excitement starting to percolate. But but more than anything, you know, being out of Cleveland, because we felt like we were there six months. Yeah, play two games. Play two games in six Cleveland. Months. Toronto a little easier five nights two games yeah. that's uh, that's April baseball I guess yeah, a bit it? of a choppy start for sure but the weather's been fine today price trying to get out of this jam however only one away and a high fly right center Jackie Bradley with a long run turning turning and that ball's out of here that's a three run homer for Mark Trumbo who had 13 last season that's a big big bat and all of a sudden the Orioles have turned this game around. That ball just kept carrying and carrying. And no chance for anyone to make that catch off into the bleachers. At Trumbo picking up his first home run of the season. And it goes a long way. That fastball's down the middle of the plate. A little bit of an inside out swing by Trumbo. And that ball got up in the wind and just took off. I mean, it was hit very well, no question about it. So this game has turned around in a hurry. Yep, 5 3 Baltimore. So an early slugfest here, and that'll bring up Matt Weeders, who struck out his first time up. And he'll take a strike. So the Red Sox getting price in early three runs, but the Orioles come storming back. They've been in a groove since opening day. They've won all five of their games. And that's a strike. You talked about it earlier, Dave. It's a team that's going to hit a lot of home runs. There's no question about that. So they're never really out of a ball game. The price a little bit wild in the inning with the walk and a hit batsman. He's also allowed three hits and so now a long three run homer and down into the dirt to make it one and two on Weeders. Orioles here for three games and then the Toronto Blue Jays will be in for four Sam after that Tampa Bay so it's a nice long homestand to get started 10 days. Yeah the guys are excited to be back it's a long time to be away from home obviously with spring training and then to go right into that long road trip. Two and two. J.J. Hardy on deck. For Buck Showalter's Orioles. The only undefeated team in the majors right now. And the 2 2. That's already been a very long inning for Price. Yeah, that's uh, not quite the same as opening day for him. Struggling a little bit with the strike zone, not getting the pitches that he wants to get, the location where he wants to put the baseball. It has been a struggle for him. He's already thrown 27 pitches in this inning. And the 3 2 to Weeders. And he blows him away, strikes him out. So the second K in the inning. Now, second time today, he has got Weeders. This time, it looks like a cut fastball that's going to get it, but still that ball is up in the zone, but it was toward the outside part of the plate, which was a little bit of an advantage for Price there. Now, we noticed it. Everybody did when they walked in the ballpark today, that flag blowing out. We knew it might be a high scoring game here at opening day. And with all of the games all three of us have seen and Jerry's played in here, and we've seen more slugfests than anybody. Absolutely. It was hard to get that flag down on the green monster for the uh, unfurling, given yeah. how windy it was. So there could be a lot of runs scored in this one. That's inside for a ball on Hardy. He is 0 for 1. Pedroia made a terrific play to rob a single from him up the middle in the second inning. So Price with a 1 1. 
right to the feet of Xander Bogarts. And that will retire the side, but the Orioles just got five runs here in the third inning. Might be one of those days. Sam, thanks so much. Great to be with you guys. Keep it up. We'll see you soon. Sam, thank you. President Sam Kennedy joining us middle of the third, 5-3 Baltimore. Season is underway. Be sure to download the Sox schedule directly into your favorite calendar program. Just visit Nesson.com slash schedule and download today. Now the sun is bursting through the clouds again. We'll see if it brings the Red Sox some more runs. The Orioles just got five off of David Price. And when he has a three nothing lead or a three run lead, three runs or more in a game, David Price in his career is 75 and two. Well, it's an Oriole team that can slug. Xander Bogarts will lead things off here in the last half of the third inning against Giovanni Gallardo. Bogarts is one for one with an RBI single, and he'll take ball one. Very strange weather day. Yeah, this has been uh, kind of weird. Now there's some blue skies up above. 1-0 pitch inside. That might get you singing. You like to, you like to carry a tune in the booth. Well, I'm going to stay away from it on opening day. <laughs> Thank you. The 2 0. A called strike. David Ortiz on deck. Hanley Ramirez will be getting a second look at the Oriole right hander. We might see a bunch of runs today. Punch to the right side. A diving stab by Davis. He rolls over and gets to the bag for the out. First baseman unassisted. Well, tomorrow night is Ortiz necklace giveaway night at Fenway Park. The first 15,000 fans in attendance receive one of those in Ortiz 500 necklace, courtesy of FW Web. For tickets and more information, visit RedSox.com slash promos. We got ours yesterday. I saw you had yours, Dave. I, I have not got mine yet. Oh, I guess I forgot to give you yours. Yeah, Very I think you did. That's okay. I'll, I'll look, get one tomorrow night. I'll rummage around for it. Here's Big Poppy, one for one with an RBI hit. As he knocked one off the Green Monster in his first at bat in his final home opener. Ortiz homered four times against Baltimore last year. He'll take a ball low. Five hundred and five career home runs for number thirty four. He is twenty sixth all time the two oh. He won't chase. Forty eight pitches already for Gallardo a ton of those in the first inning when he faced seven batters the Red Sox grabbed a three nothing lead. And now the Orioles lead it five three. That's in there for a strike. David was backing out as if he had asked for time and it was not granted. So the count of three and one. Or he was just letting it go on three and oh. Yeah, I think he was just letting it go. 
three one and a bat shatters right at the handle on a ground foul off to the left. A cut fastball a lot of time that gets in on the hands of David Ortiz. And you see that little cut right there and it comes back right about the the, uh, the label of the bat and just snaps it. Gary Sheffield lined up next for Big Poppy. Gallardo with a 3 2 to David. High fly ball into right field. Reimold will stop now and come in. Two down. Andy Ramirez to step up next. He has been red hot with the bat. Yeah, you know, couldn't quite get extended, extended on that pitch. It was inside part of the plate, and he just could not get the barrel out quick enough uh, to drive that ball. I think that's one he'd like to have back again. Hanley with a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the first inning. He went 10 for 22 on the first road trip. DraftKings is the official one day fantasy baseball partner of the Red Sox experience the thrill of playing DraftKings now play free daily using the promo code Nesson at DraftKings.com. Bases empty two down. And a strike. Base hit here and Handley will have hit safely in the first six games of the season. Popped it up though. Sky high into short left center field. Coming on Trumbo to left field. A late start. He can't get it. It falls in. Handley's into second base. Boy, he was so casual approaching that the left fielder Trumbo, he lunged at the last moment but came up empty. And my question would be, where was the center field of Rickard on that? You know, that ball is almost directly behind second base. Hardy can't make the play. You see the adjustment made by Trumbo going to his left, and the way the wind's blowing, I think that's a ball the center fielder has to call off and make. Right off the top of the glove, and you see where the center field of Rickard is. I mean, he's in a position to make a catch easy. Well, you could see Trumbo calling for it, and it did, as you said, Jerry, tip his glove, so it is going to be an error. It's an E7. And a break for the Red Sox brings up Travis Shaw. Travis reaching on a fielder's choice his first trip today, and he would eventually steal his first major league second base. And lead at second base with two down. Red Sox trailing by two. I think a lot of Red Sox fans are shocked to see David Price give up five runs in an inning. Yeah, it was a tough inning for him. The walk, then the hit batter really hurt him there when he walked to Machado. Base hit, home run after that. The 1 1. And just off the inside. Two balls and one strike. Red Sox trying to bring in a run, which would be a bit of a gift. Well, that would make it a one run lead for Baltimore. Travis went five for 16 on the road trip. He pops it up. Let's we'll see if anyone catches this one. Coming on, Rickard. Over Trumbo, and Rickard will make the catch to retire the side. So, in the end, nothing comes of the error by Trumbo. And at the end of three, the Orioles are on top 5 3 at Fenway.
Red Sox moment honoring the 1986 Red Sox season in their sixth game of 86. The Sox beat the White Sox 12 to 2. Jim Rice two for five with a home run. He knocked in three in the Red Sox victory. He did that more than once. Top half of the fourth inning Baltimore leading five to three. And Price looking for a fast inning. He did not have that in the third. A single a walk a hit batsman a two run single a three run homer. Scope was not part of that. Bryce struck him out in the second inning. One and one the count. It's a good pitch right there, that changeup. Scope probably expecting a fastball on the 1 0 count. Instead, he gets the changeup. Scope, a power hitting second baseman from Curacao. When Curacao won the 2004 Little League World Series, he was the pitcher who closed out the championship game win. And the 1 2. Just off the outside edge. We saw Jason Vertek earlier today. Wasn't Tech also a, a Little League World Series hero? I believe he was. I imagine he was. <laughs> oh, you were too. <laughs> All you guys were off the corner again. Now three balls, two strikes. You know, kit location just a little bit off for of David Price, trying to trying to get that last strike on the outside part of the plate with cutters and fastballs and just missing. Olin Reimold on deck, then Joseph, and he won't chase. That is outside for ball four. So Price has been a little bit off today. Today's suits are designed by Joseph Abood, custom made in the USA of fine Italian fabrics and available at Men's Warehouse. Well, it's two walks and a hit batsman for Price. All of that over the last two innings. Only twice in all of last year did he allow as many as five or more earned runs. Yankees in Tampa. Nolan Reimold, a strikeout victim in the third inning, so he is 0 for 1. In fact, that's how the inning began. The next five men would all reach base against Price. He's up to 72 pitches. Here's the 1 0. Not to be made, and the runner back in at first. Yeah, it's one of those days for Price where you go out there and, and you just you're just not feeling it. You, you're not you can't find that pitch that you you can fire consistently up there where you want to. And missing you know corners with his fastball with his cutter. I think his changeup has probably been the best pitch that he's had in this game. The 1 0 and he lets it go for a strike you know. John Farrell is a great fan of Tom Seaver the Hall of Famer great New York Met pitcher. He has a big picture inside his office a still photo of Tom Seaver delivering a pitch. Seaver was a drop and drive guy. And that right knee used to touch the ground when he was really powering through that 96 97 mile an hour fastball. One one is foul tipped into the mid but I worked with Tom Seaver for a few years doing Mets games together and Tom said you know there were days I didn't have it and I knew it in the bullpen. I knew before the game I had nothing. But what I used to do was grab a fistful of dirt and dirty up my right knee when I knew I had nothing just as I came out of the bullpen because I wanted the guys in the other dugout to say man he's dropping and driving today he's really got it going. We're in big big trouble. He swears he won games before they even started because of that. Well, he had the reputation, didn't he? I mean, even even if he didn't have his best stuff, he made it look like he had his best stuff. That reminds me of a kid that plays in a Thanksgiving football game, doesn't get in, and then jumps in the mud after the game <laughs> to show his girlfriend that he played. Right. Look at how filthy I got. I had some hits today. Two two. Bounding ball to Bogarts has to come in on it. Flips to Pedroia. That's one on to first, and he will not turn two. Safe at first. So Reimold becomes the runner at first base. Well, don't miss WB Mason extra innings live right after the game. TC Dennis Eckersley Steve Lyons will break down the game. You'll hear from David Price and John Farrell. Whatever whenever wherever who but WB Mason. So the Orioles with a base runner with one man out and Caleb Joseph the number nine hitter. 
who caught 100 games for Baltimore last year. Right hand batter, one for one on the afternoon with a single. 5 3 Baltimore in the fourth. So one of those starts, and you can see it where Price has to gut his way through without having his premium stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and it, Price is always a very deliberate worker, but more so today because he just doesn't feel it. He allowed a double to the first man he faced today, Joey Rickard, although they didn't score. He got him one, two, three in the second with two strikeouts. So he figured, well, he might get on a roll there, but certainly wasn't a case in the third. And he walked the leadoff man here in the fourth inning after giving up five runs in the third inning. Long way to go here in the top half of the fourth at Fenway. Late cut and a miss by Joseph makes it one and one. Not very selective right there. He's ahead in the count, one ball and no strike, and he actually swings at a pitch that was off the outside part of the plate. You see the location of this fastball from Price. It's going to be away. And when you're up one and zero, oh, you know you don't want to take a swing like that. That was a very defensive, almost a two-strike swing. One and two. Back to the change. Yep. Follows the fastball away up with a changeup away, and then once again gets the swing. Almost the exact same location as pitch number two, but this time the changeup. Ryan Mould at first base. Strike three. Got him looking. Back to number one. Yeah, and those are the kind of calls that Price needs right now. You know, a little bit off the outside edge. Really staying away from Caleb Joseph that time with all four of the pitches. And not one of them really in that uh, square box. Sends up the leadoff man Rickard. Who has doubled walked and scored. And they love this kid as the runner gets back in at first base. Nolan Reimold sits safely in his first six games in the big leagues. Singled in his first major league at bat against the Twins on opening day. 24 years old. Out of the Tampa Bay organization. He had 321 at three levels last year. And that's a strike. We'll see if it keeps up, but he looks very comfortable at the major league level. Two down here in the top of the fourth. He was late. Once again staying away that time with the cut fastball for Price. You can tell the cut fastball it's always about 89 88 miles an hour for Price. Price trying to put away Rickard. Foul tip as he hangs in there. Fans with Benjamin Moore, you can paint like no other. Go to BenjaminMoore.com to find your nearest retailer. You count 0 2, 2 down. Runner at first base for the Orioles. One and two. Price has struck out six Baltimore Orioles on the day. Facing a guy who had a terrific spring training record hit 397 in the Grapefruit League. He loops that one toward right. Pedroia out still ranging and he makes the catch very gracefully over the shoulder and try the side. One man is left. And after three and a half, still 5 3, Baltimore.
Jordan's furniture, if the Sox and the Yankees meet in the league championship series for the pennant, you can win free furniture and mattresses. It's pennant fever, and it's going on now. Go Sox. The Red Sox need a little push offensively right now. 5-3 Baltimore as we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. And Brock Holt to lead things off here against Gallardo, who settled in the last couple of innings after the Red Sox first four batters of the day singled against him. And he fell behind three to nothing, but his offense has rallied five off of David Price. Brock is 0 for 1 with a ground at first base. Chris, he had that grand slam in Toronto the other day, leading the Red Sox back from a deficit. Sox were down 7 to 2 when he ripped it down the right field line and it just cleared that fence. He said, I knew I had at least a double. Well, he had more than that as that ball hit was right on a line and you can see him running down there. He's not sure whether the ball's going to get out, but it does. Huge hit in that game for Brock Holt. He already has eight RBIs on the season, and he flicks that one foul. Brock hit 345 against the Orioles last year, one of his favorite opponents. Blake Swihart next, and then Jackie Bradley Jr. in the fourth. Once again, that outfield shifting now with two strikes on Holt. They move over about three or four steps, as you can see, shading him now to the opposite field. The 2-2. All full now on Brock. Baltimore, more than any team that comes in here in the outfield, really pinches their outfielders. They give the Red Sox the lines, but they don't give them the gaps. Check swing, that's inside. No swing, says the third base umpire, Gonzalez. So it's ball four, and a promising start for the Sox in the fourth. Take a look from the side at that swing, and not even close to being a swing. For Brock Holt. April means baseball is back at Fenway. Great tickets for the opening homestand, including Patriots Day, are still available. For more information and to buy yours, visit RedSox.com slash tickets. Blake Swihart now 0 for 1 with a fly to left. He takes ball one. Red Sox in their home openers at Fenway with a record of 69 and 46. John Farrell trying to add win number 70 to that ledger. Old leading at first, not running, and a strike. Red Sox offense had been humming along until yesterday when they were blank in Toronto after scoring 28 runs through the first four games. Sox were shut out three to nothing by Marco Estrada and the Blue Jays. But the Sox won that series two games to one. Yeah, and Estrada really won that game on fastballs and changeups yesterday. Had a very, very good changeup. And, you know, we see another guy today, Gallardo, that doesn't throw over 90 miles an hour. I don't believe there's been a pitch yet that's been over 90. The 1 1. Ground ball to the middle and under the glove of Scope. Holt around second. He's heading into third. Rickard will toss back into second. And they are on the corner. Scope almost made a tremendous play, but it got underneath him. Yeah, patience is the key for Red Sox hitters against Gallardo because, as I mentioned, he's not a hard thrower. And he's trying to nibble the corners. There you see the ball away from uh, Swihart, but lack of velocity. He's able to pull the ball, or at least hook it, I should say, up the middle under the legs of the umpire and by Scope. I think because it went under the legs of the umpire, that might have uh, hurt the vision a little bit of Scope, who had to die for that ball. So undoubtedly that's happened to you as a second baseman. Absolutely. You, you say something to the umpire? No, no. He's in, he's in a position he's supposed to be in. There's nothing you can do about that. Plus he's going to have the plate in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but kind words. Nothing but kind words. Hey, nice effort there. Yeah. You gave me a good look at it. Way thanks. to go, buddy. Yeah, thanks. See Scope going over and the ball goes underneath. Now I don't know if you know if that had anything to do with him not being able to knock it down but I've been in that situation. 1 0 fouled back by Jackie Bradley. And you kind of lose sight of it for just a moment. Jackie 0 for 1 struck out in the second inning. Red Sox are down 5 to 3 in the fourth. But threatening with Brock Holt at third base and Blake Swihart 
at first. Good speed on the bases. So that's the top fastball you're going to see right there. That ball's up. A fastball up at 88. So as a hitter, you know you have to be very patient, be able to stay back because he just he's not going to throw the ball by you. 2-1. He does not chase, so a good count for Jackie. This is where he's got to narrow his zone down middle in something he can drive. If it's not there, let it go. Take a shot on three and two. Nobody out. And the three one. High twisting fly down the left field line. Trumbo giving chase. Headed for the corner. It's going to drop in. And it bounces into the stands for a double. How about that? Boy, Trumbo's having all sorts of trouble out there. Runners will be at second and third. Another run is in. Now one run game. And right now he doesn't have any idea where the ball is going to land. No you're exactly right. It, you know he's had trouble going to his left today now going to his right. As that pitch away I was a little bit surprised to see Jackie swing at that because it was away and he just kind of lifts it down that left field line but Trumbo having all kind of problems he goes into a slide way before he has to he had quite a bit of room before he got to that wall. We talked about the wind early and wreaking havoc. It certainly has for Trumbo and left as a couple have fallen in around him. And now Mookie Betts who is two for two today runners at second and third and with a base hit the Red Sox can retake the lead. Nobody out. Automatic double for Jackie and an RBI. And pop foul to the right out of play. That's a good effort right there by Betts. Well, Betts, you know, he's trying to do is, is, is trying to get a base hit, obviously, to drive in the runs. But if you're going to make it out in this situation, make it to the right side because they're playing back. You'll get the tying run home, and you'll get that man at second base to third base with less than two outs. Betts with the inside out swing, trying to go to the right side that time. The 1 1 home. Ground ball to short. That'll bring in a run. Throw us to third base, and they're going to get Jackie Bradley on the tag. Boot. Betts will be safe at first base, and a run is in to score. So the Red Sox have fought back to tie here. Yeah, but that's not a good base running play by Bradley because, you know, you've got to know where the shortstop is. And, you know, if the shortstop is playing directly behind you and the ball's hit at you, you know he's got a chance to get you at third base. Now, remember, Bradley's already in scoring position. So you don't want to take that chance right now. What what you want is you want the out at first base and have Bradley remain at second base in scoring position. He knows he's in trouble too as he goes into the head first line. First down the inning brings up Dustin Pedroia who has singled and flied out. Now the one way to change that very quickly is to have Betts try to steal and get in scoring position where Bradley was. Torrey Lavello talking with him right now about that base running play. A check swing, the appeal, and no swing, says C.B. Buckner. It's one of the things that really stood out watching Torrey work last year when he was the interim manager. His communication skills does it in a very positive way. But he makes his point. Pedroia cracks that one to third base snagged by Machado into second one low throw dug out and in time for the double play five four three that retires the side but the Red Sox get two and it's a five five game at Fenway.
and large fountain or frozen beverage for less than three bucks. Take a break from the drive through routine and the endless lines with lunch for under three bucks at Cumberland Farms. We welcome you back to Fenway. A lot of sunshine here over the last couple of innings. The lights are on. David Price has scuffled today. He's allowed five runs on four hits. He's also walked a couple of men and hit a batter. But now we're starting even again in the fifth inning, a 5 5 tie. Now let's see if he can get things turned around and get back uh, into a comfort zone. Facing Manny Machado to lead off the fifth. He has flied out and been hit by a pitch that grazed his pant leg. And had it been kind of tied down like the left one, because he wears that guard, if he had a guard on the other leg, it never would have hit him. John Farrell thought about appealing it. It picks up the outside edge. Now players today wear the the bottom part of their pants very baggy. That's a, a different look uh, over the last couple of years, I should say. And that time he got hit by a pitch was on that baggy part. Chris Davis on deck, and then Mark Trumbo. So some home run threats. Machado hit 35 last year. Davis 47. Price in need of a 1 2 3 inning and a big wave and a miss. He spun him around on the changeup, 2 and 2. The changeup there, you see the grip from uh, David Price, and again, keeping that ball away. I mean, to me, the changeup has been his best pitch today. Line shot, base hit, that's into the alley. Jackie Bradley has to move over to scoop it, and Machado will be content with a single. Fans stay tuned following this half inning for stats facts and fantasy numbers from around Major League Baseball. Red Sox right now three and two Baltimore five and oh Yankees also three and two. Inside the division. Here comes Chris Davis he is single in a pair of runs and also struck out today. Big first baseman. He hit 53 home runs three years ago. Always swinging for the fences. 2014, he announced he had attention deficit disorder and he got clearance from Major League Baseball to use Adderall. That's commonly used to combat hyperactivity. And he failed two drug tests that year because of Adderall. And reportedly previously he had an exception but he failed to get one that year. He did get one last year. And came back to hit 47 homers. Red Sox shift on him so no one is home at third base. And he loops a foul back out of play. Yeah, the unusual part of this sh shift, Dave, is the fact that they have Travis Shaw between Pedroia and Hanley. And the reason for that is they want the double play combination intact of Pedroia and Bogarts. So that's why they pull Shaw, who you can see circled right there, into that position between first and second base. An unusual fielding position for him. Of course he plays first base as well but he's well off the line. And a lot toss as Machado's back in. They just want to make sure in this shift that they keep the double play combination intact of Pedroia and Bogarts. Locked up in a 5 5 tie here in the fifth and it's become overcast again. Machado the runner at first base. The one two to Davis down into the dirt there goes Machado he's going to advance Swihart could not pick it up and now Bogarts has to sprint over to third base to make sure someone's there. That's good base running by Machado you know they you see the ball in the dirt you take off because very seldom as I always mentioned the catch is going to come clean with it and he can read that ball right there that gets just to the left of Swihart so that's a very good read. And then they really had to scramble. Somebody had to get over to third base, and it was Bogarts. Be a wild pitch. 
So now the go ahead run at second base and David Price's rather unusual day continues. Two and two on Davis. He's had some success hitting over 300 against Price in his career. And a 2 2. He will not offer now three balls two strikes. He is up to 95 pitches. Red Sox got a very solid start out of Stephen Wright once he got out of that first inning yesterday. That was the longest start by a Red Sox pitcher this year six and two thirds. Grounded foul. David Price's pitching line is brought to you by Ace Ticket. Ninety six pitches fifty nine for strikes. Five earned. That'll jump out at you. With him. Right yesterday three walks five strikeouts 118 pitches. He told me today that in the minor leagues once he threw something like 152 pitches in a game. That was his major league high yesterday swung on and missed and tied him up for strike three. Uh, lefty throws a change up to a left handed hitter you don't see that very often but it's becoming more commonplace in baseball now. The reason they didn't used to do that is because they felt like if they missed down and in that's a good hit zone for the left handed hitter. But now they don't care they just throw the change up lefty against lefty and becomes an effective pitch. Oh, here comes a guy who's had a star cross day already Mark Trumbo a three run home in the third inning. He's also been charged in the outfield with an error. And it was a double down the line he could not make a play on where he slid very early very cautiously. Pops that one up. Hanley to be tested. Ranging down the line and makes the catch in fair ground. The runner will hold and he makes a fine throw into third base. I thought first base was supposed to be problematic for the Red Sox. Listen to the crowd. Listen to the crowd right now. They're cheering on Ramirez. He got absolutely crushed last year for his play in left field. And all we've been hearing about all spring is how good he's been doing. And you know, Dave, we've talked about it a lot and talked about the fact how important it is for him to get off to a, a good start. Now, that's not a, a great play by any means, but it's a solid play. And that's what the fans want to see. So it keeps Hanley engaged. Well, look at the smile on David Price's face. That tells you, you know, he's got a lot of support, obviously, among his teammates. He does. He really does. He's worked at it. Runner had to hold at second base Machado could not range to third and here comes Weeders who has struck out twice and he takes strike one. We're tied up five five. The sun continues to duck behind those clouds and then comes out for a couple of moments and disappears again. But the wind has been a constant blowing out to center. The early score has kind of reflected that. Two down and the 0 1. Bounced up there. Knocked to the right by Swihart, but the runner will advance on another wild pitch. That's the second in the inning for Price. Yeah, it's been kind of an easy trip around the bases for Machado after getting the base hit. A couple of wild pitches will get him to third base now with two outs. Looks like that might have been a curveball that time that just bounced. And you see Swihart there try to backhand that ball, then kicks it around. Weeders a switch hitter. Machado 90 feet away. And the 1 1. Two balls, one strike. Price has been dynamite against the American League East in his career. Record of 49 and 21 with a 317 ERA. 2 1 home. Fouled away. Price has thrown two wild pitches in this inning. All last season, he uncorked four. Strange day indeed. 102 pitches. And we're in the fifth inning. Probably working in his last inning. 
We'll see if it's his last batter. The crowd wants a strikeout. He's trying to fan Wieters for the third time. Fouled away. This is a tough lineup that Baltimore brings to town. There'll be swings and misses. They will pile up some strikeouts, but they're going to have a lot of, you know, 9, 10, 12, 13 run days. It's 103 pitches right now for Price, the same that he threw on opening day. They don't even have Adam Jones in their lineup. Their best all around player. And there's strike three. He got him looking. So he's over 100 pitches, and we're still tied 5 5 at Fenway. We're at the halfway point, bottom of the fifth, tied 5 fives. Andrew Bogarts with a high chopper down the line, but foul to get it underway. He'll be followed by Ortiz and Ramirez. For every Red Sox hit this month, Echo Store Technologies donates $50 to the Greg Hill Foundation, responding immediately to improve the lives of local families touched by tragedy. Echo Store Technologies is your data center solutions provider. Xander on the afternoon, an RBI single and a ground out to first base, so he's one for two. It's looking like the day might indeed be done for David Price. Five innings of work here in the Red Sox home opener because Matt Barnes is loosening in the bullpen. And the jacket is on for David. Two one to Bogarts line foul hit sharply and that skips into the seats. Well, Xander really cleaned that inside fastball out that time but uh, out in front of it too much as he lines it foul. Two and two on Bogarts. Bounded towards short. Cut off by Machado. Low throw and got him. Davis held on after the skip toss to first base. I'm not sure about that. I think Davis's foot came off the bag. We'll take a they're going to take a look at this. Red Sox haven't challenged anything yet this season. Let's take a look for ourselves. Now watch the foot. Does it come off or is it contact with the first base back? Tough to tell from that angle. And John Farrell coming back inside the dugout, and so the Red Sox will not challenge. 
Well, if Ooh. he had contact, he barely had contact yeah. with him. I'm not so sure either. Now John Farrell elects not to challenge on that play. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. So here comes Big Poppy with the bases empty. He has single and flied out to right. Let's go down to Gary Gary downstairs Gary OB Jerry what's going on you know the game is full of chock full of good nicknames we just saw X man potentially get robbed right there obviously everybody knows who Big Poppy is and I would be remiss not to tell this story this my third season part of the Red Sox and Nesson and I didn't know this about Big Poppy until I had a conversation with one Jerry Remy it was in fact Jerry Remy giving David Ortiz the Big Poppy moniker maybe some people at home watching this already knew that maybe we just blew some minds of some folks watching at home but Jerry you had a pretty good story back in 2003 how Big Poppy came to be. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, everybody, you know, he called everybody Poppy, you know, and they started calling him Poppy. So I went up to him one day and I said, do you mind if I call you Big Poppy because you're a big guy? And he said, no, I don't mind. I don't even think David remembers that. 2-1 pitch. So you gave David Ortiz Big Poppy on a silver platter. Well, a lot of people would like to claim that they did, but yeah, I did. I, I gave it to him on TV huh? and all of a sudden he became Big Poppy. Oh. Jerry now how do you feel when you listen to like a Drake song or insert rapper name here and they reference Big Poppy and then you almost feel like hey that's copyright infringement because I started that you know something Gary right now you're not speaking my language yeah I figured when I went with the Drake and potentially future maybe I would have shot yeah. over your head there but just know that the rappers they use Big Poppy a lot now, if you want to talk and Beatles and you. Stones go ahead see you lost me there <laughs> Three two strike three oh. and a complaint here for David. He thought that was off the corner field. The Cobra rings him up and they're two down. Yeah, you know, Red Sox have had two very questionable calls in this inning. The play at first base that I thought the foot came off the bag and this pitch is not even close. I mean that that's a cut fastball to the outside part of the plate that's not even close to being a strike. I mean it's unhittable. If you swing at it the best you're going to do is foul that off. Well, he has a serious beef there around the plate outside he said and down goes Big Poppy. So two down for Hanley who has driven in a run with a sack fly and he's also reached on an error by Trumbo. We are tied up five five in the fifth inning. Something we don't see very often a shift on Hanley Ramirez in the infield. Now, Hanley's been using the opposite field quite a bit but not so much on the ground. He's gone up the middle a few times on the ground and out of the park which he did in Cleveland one ball and one strike time now to see who's been driving the ball presented by Toyo tires Henry Ramirez last season against the Orioles in 12 games he hit 342 with four homers and he drove in nine runs. And the one one. Travis Shaw would be next. Sox have out hit the Orioles today, seven to five. Baltimore with the only home run that was by Trumbo off of David Price in the third inning. They see trips on the left side. Three balls and one strike. So for the Christmas gift, the Drake CD is out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It just I I had a I had a thought and it's gone now. I know I know who it is but <laughs> you know who he is. Yeah. You just haven't downloaded many Drake. Three one swung out and missed and a full count on Hanley. I'm with you Beatles and Stones. Pretty much right down Main Street for me. Yeah. And a 3 2 to the Red Sox first baseman. He flicked that one foul. Tonight at 10 on Nesson Sports Today, we recap today's home opener. You'll hear from Bruins players as they pack up their lockers very sadly and leave for the offseason. Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do.
A lot of Bruins talk today on sports radio here in Boston. Three balls, two strikes to Hanley. And Gallardo delivers. And it's popped up. First baseman ranging. Davis over near the tarp. Stumbled a bit, but that's off into the stands anyway. Giovanni Gallardo, his pitching line is brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. He goes four and two thirds to this point, seven hits, five earned. Knocked around in the first inning. Red Sox reaching him for three runs right away in the opening frame. And the 3 2 again. And in there, strike three, got him looking. So the side is retired. The Red Sox quiet here in the fifth. And Matt Barnes coming out of the bullpen, tied up 5 5. Airlines, transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Red Sox five and the Orioles five as we go to the sixth inning. Red Sox will go to the bullpen and bring on Matt Barnes. So the day is done for David Price. Five runs in five innings. All of those earned against Price. A very unusual outing for the ace left-hander. Barnes has pitched well, Jerry, in two appearances so far. Two and two-thirds, one hit allowed. Picked up the win last time out against Toronto going an inning in that game to run his record to one and oh. No hits allowed no runs. Sox bullpen has been a real strength here in the early going. And will have to be again today. J.J. Hardy about to lead things off but. How about Hanley Ramirez at first base so far today? Yeah, it's been a good day for him. First, making a pick, uh, a backhanded pick right here, as you can see, keeping that glove down low to the ground and then coming up after making the catch. And a little pop up down the first base line, wind blown, taking it back toward the field of play, able to make that catch and gets it back into third base. Hardy takes one outside. Red Sox fans, being such a knowledgeable group, and they know exactly what's going on. With everybody on the diamond, gave him a terrific ovation after that fine play down the right field line. You know that makes him feel good. Yeah, you know we, we've talked about it, Dave, and you know how important it is for Hanley to get off to a good start defensively, and he did on the road. It's a different story when you come home because you're playing in front of your home crowd for the first time, and you want to make sure you put on a good performance there too, because it, it's all Bill's confidence. Fly ball well struck deep left center field Bradley turning around and that ball is going to be high off the wall he knocks it down deflects it back toward the green monster and into second base Hardy he's got himself a double. He did not miss a home run by very much right there either. So Barnes rudely greeted here with a two base hit. See they want that fastball away but it stays out over the plate and Hardy. Lifts that ball almost out of the ballpark right at the top of that left field wall. Not 
knocked down by Jackie Bradley. Going to be a double anyway. Bradley, though, by knocking it down, saves it from being a triple. Brings up Jonathan Scope. He has whiffed and walked in this one. That one shot toward the wall and left, and that's going to be right off the green monster. The run is in. Hardy scores. Scope's heading for second. He dives in with a two base hit. Six to five, Baltimore. Back to back doubles. So two shots off of Barnes right out of the gate. Yeah, jumps on that first pitch. First pitch fastball from Barnes, and no trying to move him over. He's just trying to drive him in. And again, you see the location. See Swihart set up away, but the fastball in. And that one got to the green in a hurry. Here's Nolan Reimold. He's 0 for 2 today. So the Orioles back out in front. Red Sox had the lead 3 to nothing. Baltimore stormed back, got 5. Red Sox tied it with two in the fourth and now the Orioles have the lead again. Nobody out. And a 1 0 pitch a little bit low. They do have activity in the Oriole bullpen McFarland now loosening up. And it's new this year inside both dugouts that you can see those bullpens. You can see both bullpens. So the manager and pitching coach not only can see who's working in their own pen, who's working in the other guy's pen. And that's not unusual around baseball. Two and one to count. Look at that Baltimore has covered up their camera. They don't want the Red Sox seeing their bullpen. Hmm. So gamesmanship. The 2 1 from Matt Barnes. He was late. That one tied him up inside. And we talked so much about location and in the first couple of batters uh, was mislocation by Bonds that time he hits a spot they wanted to go up and in. On Brian Mole. they get it in that position they get a swing and miss. Barnes trying to fan Nolan Reimold. Grounded foul. Six runs, seven hits, two errors for Baltimore. Five runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Red Sox. The home opener at Fenway. Reimold has shown decent power in the past. He takes a ball inside. He had 15 home runs one year, 13 another year. Plenty of pop in this lineup. Caleb Joseph on deck. Scope leading at second. He just drove in a run, a go ahead run for the Orioles. Here's the 3 2. Waved at and missed. He got him. He changed up there. Yeah, I totally surprised him with a changeup. Against Bonds, you're thinking fastball, occasional breaking ball. You're really not thinking of the third pitch, the changeup, and that was a very good one. Moving back down and in on Rymel. That'd be the last thing on my mind when I face Bonds is the changeup. Fastball, a lot of them. Occasional curveball, very few changes. Here's Joseph. He's singled and struck out looking. That was against David Price. Price lasting only five innings today. But the go ahead run has been charged to Matt Barnes. And another run at second base. He's trying to prevent that from coming across home plate. The 0 1. 
Little lofter down the left field line coming on Brock Holt. He makes a nice sliding play. The base runner went all the way down to third, trying to double him up, and they do. Terrific play by the Brock star in left. And he turns it into a twin killing to get out of the inning. We've seen it before. Six to five, the Orioles up by one. Holt preventing another run. with the lead here as we head off to the last half of the sixth inning wonderful defensive play a double play turned by Brock Holt on the sliding stab and left yeah I didn't think he was going to get to that Dave the ball was slicing away from Holt look how far over he is in the scoreboard area and the ball going away from him he's able to dive make the play very heads up as he gets back up and throws it in and the runner had actually rounded third he had to retag third he had no chance of getting back that was scope so a big double we'll see how big as this continues to unfold but the Red Sox down by a run scope thinking for sure that was going to fall in Brock Holt will be the number two hitter in the inning after Travis Shaw T.J. McFarland is the new relief pitcher left hander at 6'3", 220 pounds now 26 years old last year he appeared in 30 games went two and two with a 491 ERA. He'll take over for Gallardo, so the starter is out, although he can win it, even though he didn't pitch that great. And now to hit for Travis Shaw will be Chris Young. So John Farrell will go to his bench here. This is really the role for Chris on this year's team against left handers. So whenever John Farrell has a chance, he's going to get him in. Certainly has home run ability. Last half of the sixth. And ball one on Young. So the way it's been working is when Young comes in the game, he goes out and plays left field. And Brock Holt will come in to play third base. And he popped him up. On the infield, Davis fighting the sun a little bit and makes the catch to his right. That sun bursting through the clouds. It's been in and out all day. I'd show you how Baltimore took the lead last inning. J.J. Hardy with a leadoff double. That's got to go deep uh, off that left field wall. And then Scope follows with a double to score the run. And you look at the two pitches that Bonds threw. You see he didn't hit a spot. They wanted to go away. First with Hardy that stays out over the plate. He hits the ball off the wall. They want to go away again. That ball stays inside. A ball to Brock Holt. The location of pitches is so important. Mm. Holt is grounded out. He's also walked and scored a run. Red Sox trailing by one to the Orioles. And that's a ball. Blake Swihart on deck. Sox are trying to become the first team to beat Baltimore this year.
A tall left hander pitches and finds the mark. Brock with two home runs this year. He hit two all of last year. Now the shadows are creeping in. Yeah, those have some effect right now, halfway between the pitch's mound and the hitter. 3 1 coming. He takes low for ball four, so Holt is on. He takes a second walk today. Local Dunkin' Donuts franchises are proud to give back to the communities in which they live and work. Thousands of kids have had the chance to catch a free Sox game thanks to Dunkin' Donuts. Today, we welcome the Boys and Girls Club to historic Fenway Park. Dunkin' Donuts committed to the community. Blake Swihart one for two at a single. He scored a run in the fourth inning. And across for strike one. Jackie Bradley has come to the on deck area. It has become downright spring like. Yeah, very nice. Pretty bright for Davis on that last pop up at first base. Line shot, single into center field. Swihart is on. There goes Holt. Aggressively to third, the throw, and he is. What's the call? He's safe. But Manny Gonzalez, the third base umpire, looked like a man in the park taking a stroll before he made that call. He couldn't find the baseball, I think, Dave. It was, I, I don't think it was ever held on to by Machado, the third baseman. That's a gamble by Hull, but what a hustling play this is. Here's the throw from Rickett. It comes in, and I don't think Machado had the ball. He couldn't find it, and you can see the umpire looking around for it. Might get a better look at the, where the ball is on this play. I don't think he ever had contact with the baseball. It is on the ground right there, yep. as you can see, and the umpire couldn't see that. He looked like he was sizing up his putt as he walked around and finally ruled him safe. Did that ball actually hit the umpire? Is Jackie Bradley looking at a strike? Got to take another look. First and third, one out. I think the ball did. I think the ball actually hit the umpire. Let's see when it gets through. I think it did. I think it did. A little unlucky for the Red Sox because it could have led to a run. Yeah. Brock Holt barreling around the bases. Jackie has an RBI today with a double, showing bunt, and he chops it a bunt foul. Holt was not coming home. Now what Jackie's doing there is he's trying to drag the bunt to second base now as a runner at third base this is not a suicide squeeze it's a safety squeeze and if he pulls the ball to second base like he's trying to do that's when Holt would go. He fouled it away to count 0 and 2. Holt at third Swihart at first Red Sox trying to tie it. Broken bat roller. In comes Scope. He'll go to second out there on the first and not in time and the run is in. And the Red Sox have retied it. We go back and forth today at Fenway. Now give props to Bradley Jr. for hustling down that line. I mean if you run hard down the line you get a chance to beat it out. You beat it out and you get a run. I mean they turn it very quickly Scope. To Hardy, Hardy very good at the pivot, but Bradley just beating it at first base. That ball was not hit that hard. That gave Bradley a chance to get a good jump, and he did. Almost like he was leaping at the tape there and got himself an RBI as well. So they're going to go to the bullpen, and we're tied 6 6 in the sixth inning here in the Red Sox home opener.
Remember the walk to Brock Holt now, and Holt just scored. After terrific hustle, really great hustle by Holt and Jackie Bradley, and Bradley now at first base. Michael Gibbons coming out of their bullpen, a rookie who's named the Orioles 2015 Jim Palmer Minor League Pitcher of the Year. You know, the impressive thing also about the Holt uh, play at third base, the fact that he was out of the game yesterday with a bruised foot from a foul ball. That's right. Also made a wonderful play in left field defensively. Jackie beating the wrap at first base, beating the double play on the broken bat roller. Red Sox with Tazawa now getting loose in the bullpen. So we're tied up 6 6. Mookie Betts is two for three with two singles today and takes a strike. Red Sox playing hard to retie the game. Jackie leading and dives back in. There are two out. Always a possibility Jackie could try to go with two outs in the inning in a tie ball game. The two options a straight out steal and a delay steal. The 0 1 he's holding and it's fouled away. Back to the hustle we're talking about. Brock Holt I mean, barreling into third base. And the ball got loose and actually struck the umpire. That's the second time today Holt had gone uh, first to third today and now the hustle down the first baseline and what could have been a double play to end the inning. Instead the Red Sox get a run so Bradley hustling all the way down that first baseline and beats it. No oh, two pitch outside looked like a pitch out. Yeah they were expecting uh, Bradley to go there and that pitch out almost came back and caught the outside corner. Put the clock on Jackie up that first baseline really busting it. You love to see that effort if you're John Farrell and about 38,000 others in the ballpark. There he goes. And a pitch all the way to the backstop. And it ricochets away. He went headlong into second base. Otherwise, he might have been on his way to third. And it's a stolen base for Jackie. Yeah, Jackie picks the straight steal. And, uh, you know, there were, like I said, there were two options a straight steal or a delay with two outs. He picks the straight one. No problem. Ball gets by the catcher. Head for a slide. Now he's in scoring position. Good base running. Good aggressive base running by the Red Sox. Sox have not had the lead since the third inning when Baltimore got five and went out in front. But a base hit would put the Red Sox back in front. Foul back by an aggressive Buki Betts. Two balls, two strikes. Gibbons throws hard. He's 95 to 97. A little different than the starter. A little bit. Quick in the bat up a little bit. Although the Red Sox handled Gallardo pretty well today. Five runs, and he will have no decision. Gibbons with a 2 2. Got him with some high heat at 95 to retire the side, but the Red Sox have tied it up. We are on to the seventh inning in a 6 6 knot.
Able to get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center First Aid Station. That's located behind Section 12 here at Fenway in the lower concourse. Visit BIDMC.org. Tied up 6-6, another entertaining game to the top of the seventh inning. Some changes, as mentioned, Chris Young stays in the game at left. That moves Brock Holt from left to third base. And Janichi Tazawa is the new pitcher. Right-hander 0-1 with a 386 ERA. So it'll be the top of the order here for the Orioles. Joey Rickard, who has doubled, walked and scored and popped up to second. David Price started today. He went five innings and gave up five earned runs on five hits. No decision for David. And that's in there for a strike. I think every bat at Tazawa's face so far this year, he started him off with a curveball. That was a curveball right there to Rickard. He's out of the University of Arizona, which means he's a mortal enemy of Dustin Pedroia. He went to Arizona State. Tazawa's always had good success against Baltimore in his career, a 1.78 ERA. And the 1 1 to the rookie. He bounds that one foul. That was a split that was more like just a straight changeup. It didn't really do very much. It was off speed. And that's why the hitter was out in front of it a little bit, but there was really no dip to it. Well, that's kind of like the pitch that Napoli hit out in Cleveland. He has to be careful there. Especially with that wind gusting toward the monster. One two. A wave and a miss and down he goes for strike three. That one really disappeared. That was a breaking ball again. Yep that curveball again. And you know. Tazawa has gone from showing that pitch to using it to get out. And that's that's been a big difference with him. From last year to this year. And you see uh, the amount of breaking balls that he throws 31 percent. 38 fastballs and all in the changeup. So I mean pretty much equal. Now the breaking ball surprises me. I didn't realize he threw it 31 percent of the time. Yeah that's up this year. That's his numbers this year 31 percent. You're right. He's. Almost featuring that pitch now and here's Machado. He's been on base twice. And make it three times as he stings a base hit. What a good young hitter. Two for three as we check out events coming up at Foxwoods Resort and Casino. April the 19th, Clifford the Big Red Dog is coming. <laughs> there you go, Rem. Get your tickets now. <laughs> One man out, Machado aboard, and here's Chris Davis, who has a two run single and around a pair of strikeouts. He is homer twice so far this season. Red Sox as a staff have only had one one two three inning all day. The Orioles keep on attacking and there's a big cut and a miss. That was a better split finger fastball that time and it did have a dip in it. And it also kept it away from Davis. Now the Red Sox will go back into that shift where they put Holt between Pedroia and Ramirez. Keep that double play combination together of Bogots and Pedroia. Six runs on eight hits for the Red Sox, six runs on seven hits for the Orioles. Baltimore has hit the only home run today. It was Mark Trumbo in the third inning. Off David Price. 0 oh 2. Davis. Has never had a lot of luck against Junichi. He's one for ten against the right-hander, but the one is a home run. I think what Tazawa does with him is, is goes low with the splitter, high with the fastball, and I think that's why he's had success with him. Notice that last pitch; it was a fastball up above the letters, trying to put him away. Off the mid of Swihart, and that's going to advance the runner as it goes all the way to the backstop. Wide turn by Machado. That one popped right out of his mid. 
Yeah, that hurts right there. And again, you know, they wanted the pitch up in the zone, and I think it surprised Swihart how high it did go up. Now it almost looked like he might have lost that ball. He was stunned that he didn't catch it. But that ball is, you know, much higher than what they wanted. They wanted probably above that letters again, but it went just sailed up over his head. So the potential go ahead run in scoring position. He called it a wild pitch. Only one out. And one and two on Davis. That very upright stance for the slugger. Runner will fake and it swung on and missed. And Machado back to second. So down goes Davis. That splitter. He strikes out for the third time. That's what they're talking about changing the eye level. You know, he goes from that high fastball, then he goes back to the split fingered fastball down and picks up a very big strikeout. There's that split grip. So it's up and down against Davis, and that at bat by Tazawa. Mark Trumbo belted the three run homer in the third inning. He's had a difficult day in left field. He's been charged with an error. But he has driven in three runs. We are tied up 6 6 in the seventh. Machado leading his second. Line drive and a left coming on. Young, he makes the catch. A sinking line drive. But it won't fall in. And we go to the bottom of the seventh, all tied up six apiece. Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By the great folks at Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. And by Southern New Hampshire University. See yourself succeed at snhu.edu. Great to have you with us in the Red Sox home opener from Fenway Park. And it's turning into a beautiful day and a fascinating game. We're tied up 6-6. Gallardo went five price went five both starters are out Trumbo is hit a three run homer Jackie Bradley is one for three with two RBI's and Mookie Betts loving it at Fenway two for four with an RBI as we go to the last half of the seventh inning Red Sox will bring up Pedroia Bogarts and David Ortiz and Michael Gibbons the hard throwing young right hander will stay on here in a game that has kind of been sprinkled with a little bit of everything Red Sox would like to show off some power of their own here in front of the big home crowd. Yeah once again we have another pretty exciting game here today from the Red Sox. Uh, we had a few of those on the road trip and another one here on opening day. 
it's an offense that's a lot of fun to watch and an offense that seemingly is not out of the ball game at any point. Red Sox had a three nothing lead fell behind five to three and it's been back and forth since then Red Sox tying the ball game in the fourth inning. Each team had a single run in the sixth inning so Pedroia will lead it off one for three with a single and a run scored it started out like the Red Sox were going to run all over the Orioles today. The first four Boston hitters today Betts Pedroia Bogarts and Ortiz all singled. Andy Ramirez also drove in a run with a sacrifice Red Sox jumped out in front three to nothing. Now the Orioles came storming back. The first one to Pedroia is down low ball one. Dustin hitting 308 looking for his first home run of the season. He has always hit Baltimore well 324. That's a strike. Koji loosening in the bullpen. And eyeing the eighth inning. That was a home run cut by Pedroia on a 95 mile an hour fastball. That's a little nasty too. He drops down just a bit about three quarters and uh, that ball rising as he got to the plate to Pedroia. Bogarts on deck. Givens gives it a little bit of a twist on the wind up. So it looks like he can be very tough to pick up very deceptive. And you see the shadows creeping out closer to the pitcher right now. <clears throat> Got a piece. I always felt as a hitter that the. When you're dealing with shadows the toughest pitch to pick up was the breaking ball because you couldn't pick up a spin on it. Givens from sun into shade. Rookie right hander deals and it swung on and missed. Pedroia took a peek back into the mid. That one disappeared at 96. Now this guy uh, has got good stuff. The fastball rising at 96 miles an hour. Just throws it by Dustin. Up in the zone. So one away for Xander Bogart, who has an RBI single, a ground out, and another ground out. One for three. Also looking for his first home run. He yanks that one foul. Well, the pregame ceremonies, as they so often are, were dazzling today. Highlighted by an appearance. And a first pitch from the great Bill Russell. Pop foul out of play. And oh by the way Bobby Orr was here too and so was Ty Law. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> and a combination when you add in David Ortiz and David took part in those ceremonies as well of 19 championship rings between those guys. You might find a, a ring or two somewhere in the grass if you look hard enough. The 0 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. This kid is tough. Yeah, he really is, Dave. That, you know, it's it's hard to stay off that fastball. The angle he throws the baseball on, that fastball just rises. And, you know, it looks good to you coming in. All of a sudden, it's up and it's by you. So, back to back strikeouts by Gibbons. And now, David Ortiz. This will be the first meeting of these two. The rookie and Big Poppy in his last home opener today. And he'll take one low ball one. David is one for three with an RBI single off the wall that drove in a run in the first inning. Around the outside. Well, stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Tom Karen, Dennis Eckersley, Steve Lyons. With an encore presentation of Alex Ortiz, the daughter of Big Poppy, singing her emotional rendition of the national anthem at David in tears. And moments later, when he got in the batter's box, he ripped one off the wall. Here's the 3 0, taking all the way, and that's a strike. 
Well, that's another one that's away from Ortiz. I mean, how big is that outside corner to David? Enough for Fielding Cobra. Fielding Cobra, it is large. They call 3 0 automatic. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's. That's way outside. So three and one, two down, bases empty. We're tied up six six in the seventh, and he fouls it off. Five hundred and five career home runs for the big fellow. Twenty sixth on the all time list. And a three two. High fly ball left field headed toward the wall and that's going to find the green again. David's heading for second it bounces into center field he's got a walk in double. His second hit of the day in the home opener. Now you knew that was going to be a really interesting matchup between these two the rookie and Big Poppy. Yeah and, and, and Ortiz wins you know he he knows he has to swing at that ball away because those pitches have been called strikes. Now that one's a little closer to being a strike but the only option for Ortiz is to go the other way and of course he has that kind of power where he can plant it off the wall a good break right there with the ball getting by because if not I'm not sure Ortiz can make second base. So he's two for four. And the batter will be Hanley Ramirez trying to put the Red Sox in the lead. Looks like they got to walk Hanley maybe. They yeah, are going to walk. They will take the bat out of his hands and go after Chris Young instead. So this will be an intentional pass of Hanley. With first base open. And Buck Showalter will not mess with a very hot hitter. Hanley has hit safely in every game until this point. No hits today yet. And there's ball three. So this will put the Sox at first and second with two down, ball four. The 2016 CBS Health Charity Classic features more than the nation's top golfers. Don't miss the charity classic benefit that features Grammy Award winning Lady Antebellum at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence June 28th. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com slash Charity Classic Fenway. Now the other option here for John Farrell would have been to hit Sandoval in this situation but he elects not to. He's going to stay with Young. Sandoval of course the only left handed hitter left on the bench for the Red Sox. So Young trying to put the Sox in front. He's 0 for 1, having popped out in his only plate appearance today. Now the game in left field. And David Ortiz, the go ahead run at second. In for strike one. Dylan Bundy throwing in the bullpen now for Baltimore. A right hander. Chris Young's a guy who can turn around a fastball. He has always hit the heater well. That's why he got a breaking ball on the first pitch. A one down and away. Once again, the slider. So back to back sliders to Young. So now do you sit on one? A fastball. I, I wouldn't know what to expect right now. I've seen two pitches, and both have been sliders. You got to believe he might come back with that again. Well, that rattled the pitcher Givens a little bit because a plastic bag went into the crowd and somebody caught it. <laughs> and that was the big cheer. Another one was just loose and that goes in the back pocket of the first base coach Ruben Amaro. Here comes the one one. That tied him up. He did go back to the fastball there and it's one and two. Yeah he certainly did at ninety six miles an hour up and in. That's a tough spot right there to make contact especially when you're throwing that hard. These rising heaters of his are impressive. Here comes the one-two. 
too high that time. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. We're tied 6 6 in the bottom of the seventh. And Gibbons deals. He struck him out at 97. That kid can bring it. He strikes out three in the inning. Two men left. We are on to the eighth at Fenway. Red Sox six and Baltimore six. Stores for Red Sox tickets and has the best seats at the lowest prices to all games at Fenway and all with a 200% guarantee. Treat yourself for somebody special by visiting aceticket.com or just call 1 800 My Seats. That includes tickets for Patriots Day, which are still available. That's the view now from right field looking in. And really, for one of the few times all day, Rem. That sun could be a factor out there the rest of the way. Absolutely. As we know, you know, right field here at Fenway Park is one of the most difficult to play in all of the big leagues because the stands are not all that high here at Fenway, and that sun becomes a major factor in the outfield. Well, Koji Uehara will make an appearance here in the eighth inning, trying to keep it 6 6. Koji will get Weeders, Hardy, and Scope as part of the order for Baltimore. 41 year old from Osaka Japan and off to a very nice start in three outings in a new role for him a high pop twisting foul and that'll be back toward the stand Swihart circling but it's off into the crowd time for a game break actually we check out an all new Red Sox report tomorrow at five you'll hear from Bobby Doerr the 98 year old Hall of Famer who shares his life story and talks about the most memorable moments of his career. That and more on the Red Sox report tomorrow at 5 on Nesson. Weeders today very quiet at the plate. He's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. And inside for a ball. first three years that Koji pitched in the United States he pitched for Baltimore 2009 10 and 11. He actually started as a starter. His first year in 09 he made 12 starts. It's hard to think of him now as a starter. It really is and you, you highlighted on that last road trip how many starts he made in Japan before coming over here and was a big time winner there as a starter. He bunts right through it. Boy, that's a guy frustrated. Now 0 for 5 against Koji in his career. He strikes out for the fourth time. Now game break brought to you by Jordan's the furniture store, the Boston Red Sox. We toss it to TC.
top thank you very much the batter J.J. Hardy just looked at a strike. He has got one for three with a double and a run scored that was back in the sixth inning. And Koji dealing another strike to jump in front 0 and 2. It was interesting by Wieders wasn't it with two strikes on him trying to drop a bunt down that uh, third base side where they had the shift on him. And fans for the fourth time. Waved at and missed that one ate him up strike three back to back K's by Koji. That's the good split finger fastball from Uehara. And you see the split grip and keeps it away and then the late drop. Nice job by Swihart to pick it out of the dirt then apply the tag. Slight hesitation for Koji at the top the follow through on the splitter and the good result. Another good one. Mm. He's got it going that splitter is diving. Scope has struck out walked and doubled in a run but in his career 0 for 4 two whiffs against Koji. Fly ball into left field driving back young but he has room on the back pedal he makes the catch. And the side is retired. We go to the last half of the eighth inning in a 6 6 tie Holt Swihart Bradley coming up. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Getting late here at Fenway. We're tied up 6 6. Jerry Remy and Dave O'Brien with you. Koji is still a blast to watch pitch, isn't he? Well, you know, it's amazing. He gets by with an 88 mile an hour fastball and that split finger fastball. It's amazing to me how many times there's no contact on his fastball at 88. Yeah. And opponents this season 0 for 12 against him. Still getting it done not the closer anymore that's Craig Kimbrell but he's gotten the Red Sox here to the bottom of the eighth in a 6 6 tie Kimbrell is now up and beginning to loosen. Brad Brock is the new pitcher for the Orioles he's pitched well four appearances a one and oh record. He has seven strikeouts in four and a third their bullpen has been excellent. The Sox are delighted that Michael Gibbons is done for the day. He was awfully tough to hit he is Brock Holt. So Brock against Brock here. Brock with a couple of walks. He has scored twice. He's also made a dazzling defensive play in left field that he turned into a double play. Now trying to get the Red Sox a winning rally going in the bottom of the eighth. And Machado went on the grass at third base uh, trying to prevent against a bunt from Brock Holt. The bottom third of the Red Sox order has been really productive today. Holt has scored two times. Blake Swihart behind him has two hits. Jackie Bradley has a double. And he's also driven in a couple of runs. Jackie has also stolen a base. So it's that part of the order that's done significant damage against the Orioles. And we are tied up six apiece here in the home opener. 
on Yaki Wade. The Orioles have not lost. They're five and zero. Oh. Ground ball, crack bat to first base, scooped up by Davis, and that's one man out. Speedway is proud to be New England's first choice for value and convenience. For every Red Sox home run this season, Speedway donates $500 to the Boston Children's Hospital. Stop by a Speedway store nearest you and pick up your Speedway rewards card and start earning points today. I got to tell you, if you're ever going to lift the ball of left field, allows the time to do it because that wind is really gusting out in that direction. Swihart batting left handed. Fouled it off. He's two for three. Two singles and a run. Kimbrell getting ready to enter. The flame throwing closer. Here's the 0 1. Pounded in there at 96. Does everybody throw 96 miles an hour these days? Seems like everybody that comes out of the bullpen does, that's for sure. Teams love no contact relievers. The 0 2. High fly toward left field. Backing up Trumbo. He's been tested today and he makes that catch up on his tippy toes. Well, he was fooled on that, too. The wind carried that ball. You know that ball was not hit all that hard by Swihart, but again it got caught up in that wind and you can see Trumbo going back. He doesn't know exactly where the wall is. He still had a couple of steps but he goes into the leap and I think he's surprised when he turns around to see that the wall was still three or four feet from him. Two down. And Jackie Bradley now. One for three couple of RBIs today and he flicks that one foul. I should say everybody throws 96 except for Koji and he doesn't have to. It just disappears. Coming out of his hand. We are in the last half of the eighth inning in a 6 6 tie the Red Sox and the Orioles first of 19 meetings in 2016. Oh two. That's a good splitter right there too and a hard splitter at 86. So fastball at about 96 and splitter at about 86. Mookie Betts would bat next, but two strikes on JBJ. High pop up into right. Scope the second baseman out. Coming on Rymold in the center fielder. Rickard makes the play. A basket catch. Play anything in the air in the outfield today, it's going to be tough. We go to the ninth, 6-6. Six, six.
presented by Joseph Abood and available at Men's Warehouse. Great to see Joe in the booth with us. Dropped by to say hello earlier today. TC, Dennis Eckersley, and Steve Lyons will preview Clay Buckle's start tomorrow against the Orioles. To the ninth inning, no resolution yet. Red Sox and the Orioles tied up 6-6. Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien with you back at Fenway. And Craig Kimbrell will make his Sox debut in the home game here in the home opener against Baltimore. So far, so good. He's been outstanding. Ryan Flaherty has a bat, and he'll hit for Rymold. So a pinch hitter here in the ninth inning. He shatters a bat on a ground ball to Hanley behind the back of fair ball, and that's out number one. And that came apart in pieces. Yeah, and part of it went down toward uh, first base as Pedroia is going to pick it up now and just uh, gingerly give it to somebody. And Hanley able to keep concentration and get that ground ball, get the out. But look at the bat just shatter all over the place. Gimbal some, throws a little hard, doesn't he? Yeah, it does. Some at home plate, some out to second base. But the big thing, the out for the Red Sox. Caleb Joseph will be next. Kimbrell believes that a non baseball injury that he suffered 10 years ago while helping his dad on a construction site helped him become a power pitcher. Several hundred pounds of sheetrock fell on his foot. And it snapped his foot, he said, nearly in half. He said the only bone that wasn't broken was his pinky toe. And for the next six months, he had to throw from his knees, which slowly strengthened his back and his arm to the point where he could throw a baseball the length of a football field. And by the time he was again upright, his velocity had gone from the upper 80s to the mid to high 90s. And he swears that's the reason why. And that's something we do not recommend uh, to kids to try. <laughs> no. He certainly doesn't. Touching 97 with that fastball. Two balls and one strike. But it's not like he's 6'5 and 240 pounds. He's listed as six feet. And about 210. Three balls and one strike here on Joseph. I think the six feet may be stretching it a little bit too. I agree. Zach Britton the left hander loosens in their pen. We're in the ninth inning a six six tie. One man out bases empty for the birds and the three one. And he walked him. So base runner on here in the ninth inning. Tomorrow at 6.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live, presented by DCU. TC, Dennis Eckersley, Steve Lyons, joined by Red Sox President of Baseball Operations, Dave Dombrowski. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Here's David. Looking for a win here in the home opener. The man who brought Craig Kimbrell to Boston. Here's Rickard. A rookie center fielder is one for three with a double, and that's strike one. Seeing the Red Sox closer for the first time. The Sox have due up in the bottom of the ninth. Betts, Pedroia, and Bogarts. And if anybody reaches, David Ortiz. And Kimbrell. Trying to make sure it's 6 6 when they bat. Off the outside corner at 97. Everything hot from Kimbrell. The fastball 97 98. A hard breaking ball. The 1 1. And that one missed high. Two balls, one strike. One try him. He goes to the breaking ball. Missed upstairs at 86 with that pitch. He's thrown nine pitches since coming into the game. Only three strikes. Joseph, the base runner at first base, is a catcher. 
And the 2 1. That's a strike. Mm. Red Sox will take that because they've had a few of those called against him today. This ball, no doubt, outside, but uh, Kimbrell gets the benefit of the doubt and gets the call. That's a break there. Fielding Culbreth with a big strike zone all day. Kimbrell looking for a K. Now three and two. 98, but not in the zone. The dangerous Manny Machado is on deck. He has two hits today. Three balls, two strikes, a man on, one out. Ninth inning, tied 6 6. Two down. Uh, Oba throwing a couple of fastballs and missing away. This time he just rib acts. And it's power against power right there. And Kimbrell wins that battle with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Very strong lower body. You talked about Tom Seaver early in the game. A lot of leg push. Same thing with Kimbrell. Yep. Machado off to a very hot start hitting 458. He takes ball one on the day a pair of singles and he was grazed by a pitch on his pant leg by David Price in the third inning. That was part of a five run rally by Baltimore. They went from three nothing down to up five to three with those five in the third. Red Sox would tie it. In the fourth inning. And that's a ball low now two and nothing. Turned into a tense home opener for the Red Sox. And a 2 0 2 Machado with two down. Well outside. Nobody has beaten Baltimore yet. They are 5 0. Sox are 3 and 2. The 3-0 to the number two hitter. He's taking, and that's low ball four. So he walked him. That's second walk in the inning. 2016 Red Sox season underway. Be sure to download the Sox schedule directly into your favorite calendar program. Just visit nesson.com slash schedule and download today. And that'll bring out Carl Willis. Red Sox pitching coach is 30 seconds. You see that clock at Fenway. And in every ballpark this year, it's brand new. Tied up 6 6. Take a look at how we got here today. Trumbo with that long home run in the third inning. Off of David Price, who went into that inning with a 3 0 lead. That ball carried a long way going to the opposite field. Mookie Betts on a ground ball, a shortstop will get a run home, but Jackie Bradley is thrown up out of third. Jonathan Scope takes one off the wall. That brings home a run to make it 6 5. And then Bradley hustling down that first baseline to beat out a double play. And Brock Holt scores to make it 6 6. That's where we are here in the ninth inning. The Orioles are threatening with two on. Here's Davis. He gets a breaking ball to start. You know he was sitting on a 98 mile an hour fastball. This should be a fascinating duel between these two. Power against power. One of the premier home run hitters in baseball against one of the best fastball guys in the game. High fly dead away center. Way way back that one carrying carrying gone on a home run. A three run shot for Davis. And that'll make it nine to six Baltimore. Up onto the batter's eye in center field. Well, we mentioned that power against power, and Davis is going to win. And one of the reasons he wins this battle is because the fastball is going to be down, and he likes the ball down. You see the location of that pitch, the bottom of the strike zone. That's exactly where Davis likes it, and he took it very deep to straightaway center field. He 
And you can hear a pin drop at Fenway. Fouled out of play by Trumbo. Up on top of the roof of that dugout. Nine to six Baltimore as they hit their second three run homer today. So the Red Sox are going to have a big rally in front of them come the bottom of the ninth here. Davis with his third home run of the season and a towering drive. The 0 1 is up and in. Now Davis has hit a few like that, hasn't he? 47 home runs last year, 53 a few seasons ago for the Orioles. That's why they brought him back, signing him to a big contract as a free agent. And he provides a three run cushion. That two, three run home runs today for the Orioles. Trumbo back in the third. Now Davis with the big one in the ninth. One and two to count on Trumbo. Cut on and missed. Down he goes, strike three. But two walks and a three run homer. And just like that, the Orioles are in front again. Nine to six as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Our starting pitchers are Mike Wright and Clay Buckholz. This closer look is brought to you by FW Web Selection Expertise Solutions. More at FWWeb.com. A towering three run homer just moments ago by Chris Davis off of Craig Kimbrell has made it nine to six Baltimore as we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Rickard will move from center field over to right field. And Adam Jones who's been battling a rib cage. He's now in center field didn't start today. Flaherty stays in the game to play left and Zach Britton is the new closer. Four and one with a 192 ERA and 36 saves last year. And Mookie Betts will lead things off the Red Sox straight uphill here suddenly trailing by three runs. Britton has been sharp out of the gate. With two saves and two opportunities. Mookie has gone two for four. Another hard thrower here, this time from the left side for Baltimore. Yeah, he's uh, he's got movement on his fastball, too. That was 97 with a little tail on it. Mookie with a base hit in the first and the second. Flies that one down the line, slicing, and that'll go foul. On a fastball to touch 98. Nesson is looking for youth baseball and softball teams. For a live studio audience, for Nesson Clubhouse, visit NessonClubhouse.com. Click on Studio Audience to enter your son or daughter's team. That experience will include a pizza party and a lot more to be part of the studio audience. And a 1 2 to Mookie. Backs him off. Dustin Pedroia on deck. Xander Bogarts after him.
A stunning drive by Davis. Hit it way, way up on that batter's eye. Fouled off his foot. When he hits them, they go a long way. Well, he likes the fastball down, and that's exactly where he got it right there. He's got that slide uppercut swing, and when he makes contact, he can just absolutely hit it a long way. And he did there. That was an estimated 426 feet. Britain with a 2 2. Spoiled again by Mookie. Red Sox looking for a couple of base runners and a blast of their own today. Both of the home runs in the game are Baltimore's. Wind is really howling out to center. The 2 2. Now a full count. Red Sox trying to rally in the home opener. Try and pull off another Mother's Day miracle type of thing against these Orioles. 3 2. There's a drive. High and deep to left. That one is gone. Well, that's a start. And the Red Sox make it 9 to 7. Uh, what a great at bat by Moogie Betts. I mean, he really made Britain work. And he finally gets a fastball that's going to be just above the knees, as you'll see. Right at the bottom of the strike zone. And there was no doubt when he made contact, that ball was going out of the ballpark, right on the sweet spot of the bat. So a good day for Mookie. Three hits, including this home run, and Red Sox back within two. Here's Dustin Pedroia taking one up and away. Petey one for four. Into the monster seats in about two seconds. Nine seven. Nobody out. And a strike on Pedroia. Look what he's done against Britain. Eight for 13, including two doubles. That's just a 615 batting average. Now the crowd is back into it. Here comes the 1 1. Round ball, deep short, through for a base hit. Pedroia aboard for the second time today. And the Red Sox showing some serious life here in the ninth inning. Yeah, uh, this has really been wild here this afternoon at Fenway. Offense all over the place. Even though they're pinching that hole between third and short, Pedroia still finds it as he gets it by J.J. Hardy. That'll send up Xander Bogart to his single, grounded out, grounded out, and struck out. One for four. Now Xander represents the tying run. David Ortiz is on deck. Pedroia at first, and that's ball one. Those are the kind of pitches you've got to stay off. They look like strikes, and because of that late movement, they go off the outside part of the plate. The lefties 1 0 to Xander. Fouled at home plate. One ball and one strike. Yet another pitcher in this game throwing into the upper 90s. Mookie with a blast. His second home run of the season. Xander killed lefties last year. Hit 365 against them. Second best in the majors. One and one. That one eats up the catcher. Joseph all the way to the backstop, and Pedroia will rock to second. 
Well, if anything here in the ninth inning, it seems like Britain's a little bit rattled now. The leadoff home run, the base hit, now a ball that's going to bounce. Caleb Joseph tries to backhand that ball instead of blocking it. That allows Pedroia to go to second base. It's a wild pitch. And now Joseph out to consult with his pitcher. The count two and one on Xander. It's a day that began with a moving rendition of our national anthem sung by David Ortiz's daughter, Alex. And she was sensational, brought tears to her father's eyes. He wiped those tears away, quickly ripped the single off the wall his first at bat today. And now he waits on deck. He has two hits today a single and a double. Right now it's Bogarts against Britain. Pedroia leading his second. Nobody out. Low, three and one. Britain with a 3 1. And he walked him. First and second for David Ortiz. Wallace, the pitching coach, will pay a mound visit here. And everybody's up at Fenway. This would certainly be poetic, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, sure would. <laughs> I can see one right now going to the opposite field up in that win. It'd be a perfect cap. Number 34, David Ortiz. David, 37 home runs last season. Now his final season, his last home opener. He has runners at first and second, nobody out. Red Sox trailing 9 7 in the ninth. Low for ball one. The Sox trying to rally. The 1 0. Oh, he went for it. One ball and one strike. Yeah, down out of the strike zone. Ortiz a little bit anxious on that pitch. Ball never really a strike until Ortiz swung at it. Even David chastised himself a little bit, saying, I got to get it up, got to get it up. 1 and 1. Foul away. He got a big time fastball and he got a piece. And it looked like Ortiz had in his mind going the other way on that swing. One and two runners at first and second. Up the middle. Scope from his knee throws to second on the first double play down to third is Pedroia. What a stop by Scope. He turns to. Oh, what a huge play for the Orioles. And Jonathan Scope with a big dive right there to, to get that ground ball. And usually they play in, they play Ortiz a little bit more to pull. And Big Poppy doubled up. I think the Red Sox are challenging that call at first base. Let's take another look. J.J. Hardy coming across. Uh, it looks to me like they had Ortiz, but I believe they're challenging it, and they're going to take a look at it. Is there any chance they're challenging second base and the neighborhood play? Because you can review that now. That's brand new this year. Well, it's quite possible. Let's take a look. Uh, let's take another look at the play at second base and look at J.J. Hardy. Does Hardy right now have the bag? No, oh, he yes. had it. Yep. He's got it. 
He's got it. And the throw to first. If anything, with Bogots reaching out the hand with the new rule would cause an automatic double play. Watch Bogots come in and take that hand right there and try to hit the shortstop. Now we've seen double plays call because of that. That rule's killing me. The Red Sox are challenging to play at first base. Outer safe there, but it looked like David Ortiz was out. Yeah, it looked it was on replay like he was out, but uh, you know, it's worth the challenge here in the ninth inning. So as soon, assuming this is upheld, it'll be a double play. And there are two down with Pedroia at third base, and Hanley Ramirez will be the batter. He will be representing the tying run. And it looks to me on that replay like Davis did have the ball in his glove before the uh, before Ortiz hit that first base bag. Let's see what the umpires think though and what they think back in in New York. So this play is under review. It's the first challenge for the Red Sox this season. And they're going to uphold the call out at first base. So that's the ruling. A double play. And there are now two down. The scope made a tremendous play up the middle. Yeah, he really did. I mean, at first when that was contact made, you thought maybe at least a base hit for the Ortiz, but scope goes into the dive. And I'll tell you who else made a good play because he couldn't get much on the ball was J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. He was going out toward right field to make that throw. Andy Ramirez has an RBI today. He is 0 for 2. He's also been intentionally walked. He drove in a run with a sack fly in the first inning. And the first pitch is across for strike one. And he wasn't thrilled with that one. He thought it was down low. One for one in his career against Britain with a single, so not a whole lot to go on. Pedroia at third. An inning that started with Mookie Betts slamming a home run into the monster seats, then Pedroia singled. He was advanced on a wild pitch. Bogarts took ball four, and everybody's hopes were high with David Ortiz in the batter's box, but he's just been doubled up. And the Sox are down to their last man. And a cut and a miss now, 0 and 2 on Hanley. 9 to 7 Baltimore in the bottom of the ninth inning. With a victory, the Orioles would be 6 and 0, and the Red Sox would fall to 3 and 3. And the 0 2 from a hard throwing southpaw. Fouled away. So Hanley stays alive. Hanley did hit four home runs last season against the Orioles. Ball and two on Ramirez. And the pitch. He got him, and that's the ball game. 9-7 the final. The Orioles stay perfect now 6-0 and on the season. And in the end, it was a mammoth home run by Chris Davis off of Craig Kimbrell in the ninth inning. That was the game winner. 9-7. So the Red Sox come back, fall short, T.C.